Hey guys, um, I'm doing this as um, about a day or so after the stream went up on Twitch uh, to give people enough time to watch it there if they wished. But this is uh, going to be a natural introduction as I uh, it, it needs to be that way. It, it just does. I haven't brushed my hair, I haven't long gotten up. I've got Amara running around and watching kids shows in the background. And yeah, this is a discussion that I had with two wonderful, amazing women, um, Janaya and Jessica, uh, both from America, but uh, Janaya has been over here in Australia for the last couple of years now. And to get their perspectives, to get um, their stories, to hear their stories getting told, their experiences, um, how they felt about it, what they think would actually help um, and the conversations themselves aren't at all scripted. They are natural. They are from the heart, from the head. They, they just are. I have my daughter run in on occasion to say hi, and I'm not going to edit any of this stuff out. It is going to be exactly as it was in the stream because I think that's important to show that these are real conversations. These conversations are happening. And I'm really hoping I can continue to do more. I hope you enjoy this. Please let me know what you think. Have a discussion in the comments. Have a discussion with your family, with your friends. Please. Every little bit of this helps. Every single bit. We can all do our part. We can all do more just by simply talking. So yeah. Uh, without further ado, guys, here's the video. Finally excited to actually sit down and do this. I've been looking forward to this for the last couple of weeks. Oh, wow, that's good. I'm glad we've actually been able to sort out our technical issues. Amen. <laughs> Thanks to me. Yeah, yeah, no, just it's genius right those, here. It's those big brain strats. <laughs> that's what it is. Uh <laughs> Oh my it's COVID-19. I've been thinking of a lot of interesting things since being on shutdown, you know. <laughs> well, there's not really much else to do. Right? Oh, my God. True. Uh, so, um, yeah, welcome to Janaya and Jessica. It's good to have you guys on the stream, and I'm really happy you agreed to come on. Um, do, yeah. do you want to tell everybody a little bit about yourselves to start off with? Yeah. Jessica, you want to start? Sure. Um, hey, I'm Jessica uh, from the States, uh, originally from like Maryland, I guess if you know where that is, it's like East Coast, DC. Okay, and I'm no longer there. I'm down in Florida now and uh, nice sunny Florida and haven't run into Florida man, thank God. If you know anything about him, he's crazy and creepy. So, oh, yeah. thank I was oh, yeah. concerned moving down here, okay? but. Haven't run into him yet, and you know, life's okay. Definitely, I guess. So, you know, I'm doing all right. Nice to be here. Thanks for the invite. I really appreciate it. Well, thank Yay. you for coming on. Uh, excellent. <laughs> I don't know who Florida Man is. I don't know what that means. She just got but. <laughs> ah! Can you hear me? Oh, dear. We can, we can hear you, but it, yeah, you're frozen again. And now you're loading back in. No. Now you're moving. No. Ah, we'll, we'll, just, run, we'll just run with it. It's fine. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> you don't see me? You don't see me? Oh my god. I'm so sad. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> because Jessica was sputtering, so I had to. Okay. I'm Janaya. <laughs> I'm from Chicago in America. And, um,. I left America largely because of like racism and Trump being elected. Uh, so now I'm in Australia. I was in China for a bit. I'm just trying to survive. Right. That's about it. All right. Can you hear me? Can you we see can me? You. Can't see me. Okay. We can see you. <laughs> we can hear you, but we can't see you occasionally. <laughs> But we'll run with that. Oh. It's fine. Okay. No, no you're moving it. fine. You're moving fine at the moment. 
but every so often you will <laughs> okay. freeze. So we'll see how that goes. I'll take it. Um, I'll take that. I'll take it. <laughs> right. Let me so, put on my mic. That's yeah. That's not a bad idea. <sighs> We've got some decent set of headsets. All right. <laughs> Can you, um, can you hear us fine? I can hear you. I can't hear Janae. Can, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Your mic quality is way better. Whoa. Okay, I'll keep these headphones in then. Yeah. Ooh. That's awesome. Sounds like you're right in my ear. That is um, right. Can, so you hear, can you hear me, Jessica? If not, I'll... Can't hear Janae. Okay, I'll exit and then come back. Oh, you can't hear her at all? Can't hear it at all. Wait for her to come back. Oh, I'm glad. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm glad my um, you know, my sound quality is better. For as much as I paid for these headphones, they should be really great. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, I can hear you, Janelle. Oh, there we go. Can, can you see me? Yes. We can. can see you. Okay, we're gonna cut out all this beginning part, and we're just gonna. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> from there, it, it is it's live, live. So <laughs> it is live. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cut it from your mind, guys. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. So, hey, welcome. No. Um, uh, are those are those uh, Astros, Jess? Um, it's Ooh. called uh, like Real Tech. I can't remember. Here, look at the logo. What's that? Uh, what's that logo yeah, like to you? I think, I, I think that actually is a Real Tech set of headphones. Yeah, they're really good. Tech. Yeah. Nice. Um. Well. Um. Denaya, we actually might start off with you because uh, you actually brought up a really interesting point. You moved over to Australia um, in part due to the racism that you faced in your own country, yeah? Yeah. Um, it's just I was hoping for a change. Um, I actually moved to China first because my mate was going to China, so I was like, oh, I'll give it a go. You know, right. we'll see if something's better than this. Um yeah, and I had left a job before because, like, I just didn't feel connected to anyone. And it was, like, a largely um, extremely white uh, environment. And, like, it was really sad, too, because I felt like I was brought there because I was black and because I could speak to, like, the black students. But then I just didn't feel like I had a support system there, so I left. Mm -hmm. But... Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's better in Australia, but then now I see like the Aboriginal plight here and I'm like, I just like feel for them too because they identify as black. They've experienced a lot of um, just suppression here and killing here and stuff. And so it's like you leave one monster, go to a new monster. It's one of those things, but it's better for me, I guess. Have you found have you found that since you've been over here that you've experienced um, well, that you have experienced less racism in general, or are you finding that just what you're experiencing has changed? Uh, I think well, me personally, I'm experiencing less racism. Yeah. Oops. Um, just oh my god. What the hell? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, basically. But like, I feel like the pro the biggest problem that I found in America is more the systemic racism, which is mm. what I was telling Jesse before, like via chat, was that I feel like the system is what brings me down in America. Just like walking around and knowing I have to act a certain way, look a certain way do everything just right so that no one tries to kill me no one tries to or no one like hurts me verbally or emotionally or physically like just being black you, you like have to walk a certain way in the store and like always show your hands and always like act very nice and polite and stuff like that like so that people don't accuse you of stealing or of you know, being a danger to society and stuff. But yes, what do you think, Jessica? Like, do you feel like it, like you felt racism like on a systemic level or like a personal level? Because like my personal things have been like microaggressions, like little things that are sort of like 
did they do that because I'm black? Did they? What was that about? Whereas, like, what what have you experienced? Um, I guess I would say a little bit of both, but more so systemic. Um, and I, I don't know what to like even compare it to because I was in China with you. Um, and China's like a whole other animal, um, mm. especially Guangzhou. Mm. As much as I loved being in Guangzhou, like there were there were mm. moments I was like, oh my gosh, I thought I had left like mm. this behind, and mm. what is this? It's obnoxious. Um, in in America, I feel like it's more of a systemic issue where, like you said, you constantly have to like mind how you're perceived, and you're always othered mm. in some way, mm. um, and is like the main reason why I speak the way I do. It's the main reason why I wear hair extensions. Mm. It's the main reason why um, just a, a variety of, of different ways in which I kind of like make myself small so that people are comfortable. Mm. I, f I feel like microaggressions play into that, but the system is a big component to making that my like everyday reality. Um, mm. I have like you been trying to look for places I mean, you already found yours in australia but i'm like yeah. ready to, to get out like yesterday mm -hmm. and, and, a, and a half yesterday and a half i guess like i've been ready to leave mm -hmm. since i i got here and the only thing is i i i messed myself up um but where, where i'm at right now is my new place so that's why there's like nothing in here um oh yeah but, yeah but um so I'm, I'm probably stuck here for like a couple of years but uh yeah i i would say the system issue microaggressions but more so a system issue i feel like once we get rid of systemic racism which i'm hoping mm. these protests are going mm. to lead towards knocking down the pillars of systemic racism mm. and we can work on like education i feel like education will definitely help with mm. the microaggressions for so once people are educated that should go away because racism and microaggressions are all just taught behaviors and mm -hmm. you can't kids being tabula rasas they know they don't know anything so there's no reason to to give them your hatred and your you know mm. you treat like they don't need any of that so yeah well that's that's um that's actually really interesting some of the some of the points you brought up there you say that mm -hmm. you uh, and both of you have experienced this um, that these little microaggressions that people have had against you guys and you have changed not only learned behavior but changed certain parts of your behavior or yourself to um, as you put it like make yourself seem smaller so do you guys want to expand on that a little bit more just like what you guys have actually done um, to like change parts of yourself or the actions that you might have actually taken um, to see, or to lessen the amount of, of, of well, basically, um, to lessen the amount of the uh, racism that you guys have experienced in the past. I mean, yeah, I feel like for me, like it starts when you're a kid, like talking a certain way, like Jessica's saying, like you know, like code switching, where like you talk black, but then you also have to talk white as they say like you have to speak properly or else people will automatically think you're uneducated and think that they can do anything to you like just treat you any kind of way or disrespect you um so you have to like know how to talk their way and you have to know how to look their way like with hair extensions i mean right now i'm rocking mm -hmm. the fro but i have wigs like i have weaves and whatnot and it's I'm and it's like, I just, um, you like feel like a pressure. And like, this is something that I don't think anyone even taught me. It's just like so ingrained that it's just like, you just have to do it. Like you just learn to do it. Like when you're at a store, like I'm gonna, like I would say like show my hands, like my hands are always free. And I'm always like looking, I'm not looking suspicious, like hunched over, like I'm trying to steal something. And it's like, I don't even think I talk to other black people about it. It's just something that like I, do so that I'm not targeted by police, targeted by, you know, people who want, who have malintent and who want to hurt me or who are automatically suspicious of me. Like when I walk down the street, like 
I want to walk a certain way and look it, like Jessica's saying, like, I don't want to look too tough unless it's at night. And I just want to like look innocent so that no one thinks that I'm guilty because there are all these associations with like black people just seeing a black person like, oh, are they going to beat me up? Are they going to steal for me? Even though like we don't even do anything like I mean, like so many black people <laughs> are so innocent. Room. Yeah, just, we're just yeah. existing. But it's like just the yeah. uh, seeing us, they're like, oh, shit, like they're going to come and come and stab me or something like everyone's just afraid of black people even i have been indoctrinated to be afraid of black people even i walk down the street like in america i'll see a black man and i think for a second oh i should oh be scared oh maybe he's gonna hurt me and then i remember uh, i'm black there he's not gonna to hurt colonize, me right, like to colonization he, Mm -hmm. And it's just like we just have all this stuff that we've been brainwashed with as well. And that's why I know it's real because I grew up in America. I've been brainwashed to think black people are dumb, to think all these things that aren't even true because we're multifaceted humans. But yeah, I'm just trying to live and operate in that world. And it takes up a lot of headspace and a lot like it, it hurts your brain sometimes trying to be perfect and trying to be small, like Jessica's saying, like. And so I'm still working on it because I still have a lot of like trauma from that, like trying to just walk and just be myself, as people tell me to do. Just be yourself. But like I have all this like stuff to unlearn and stuff to, yeah, that I'm feeling and stuff. What do you think, Jessica? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm right there with mm. you. I mean, I'm, I'm looking up like what exactly is microaggression based mm. on like how other people define it and, mm. and what I'm noticing is that it's like the, the slights and like the indignities and the put downs that you have to deal with on a day to day basis because you're a part of like the marginalized group and um, I guess the majority group doesn't really recognize that they're doing that so it's it's small things but um, the part that I find to be really uh, interesting in the way that we make ourselves small is the way in which we respond, right? Mm. So because the response in that is um, kind of, I guess, tailored to like the stigma that black people have, where like even our gestures with our responses or our facial expressions or, you know, how we respond regularly can be confused with the majority group as being you know super aggressive mm. so like you have to constantly watch how you respond and so like with with microaggressions it's always like filter if i respond could i be put in danger by this uh if i respond will this person become defensive and call the cops you know if i respond to this microaggression will like i not have a job tomorrow mm -hmm. like you constantly have to like think about things and, and like filter it and filter it and filter it Mm. Oh, sh who? We lost her. We did. No. She was saying something so good. We hadn't had a problem with her all afternoon. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh yay. Oh, <laughs> it went out. Ah. Yes. All okay. right. We hadn't it's had okay. an album all afternoon. <laughs> I know, right? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't know what happened. <laughs> We've got. Uh, it. Yeah, okay, there he is. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Nice. All right. Good job. <laughs> All right. I was saying in that in that filtering that you do constantly, like that is the way in which you make yourself small because you're not being your most authentic self, um, and so you are like denying who you are to make others feel better about themselves when in reality the, the the harm that was done was against you so you and for that matter others are able to express their feelings and not like oh and live to see tomorrow right mm. so like you mm. should also be allowed to express your feelings um and and still like live and and be and still have friendships and and still have your job and still have your life and mm. I, I just yeah, those microaggressions are like really really agitating it's part of the reason why i like COVID 19 not because people have passed away but because i'm, I'm not really around people right now mm. I'm just yeah. in my in my house right like you know i don't have to yes. deal with the masses sorry it might be kind mm. of rude but it's kind of yeah. where i'm at everything you guys experience i mean that <laughs> is 110 percent um understandable i i uh, for myself, obviously, I can't speak from any kind of ex I, I would not... I'm, I am a cisgendered, male, white, you know, um, 
guy in his mid twenties with long hair and a beard in the middle of <laughs> God forsaken nowhere at the bottom of the world. I'm the, the <laughs> sheer like poster boy of every kind of privilege that's ever existed. Yeah. I I I as much as I can mentally accept and acknowledge that these things are happening to you guys and and to various other people of color and um, other ethnicities and um, and sexual orientations and whatnot around the world. The idea for myself of changing so much of my life to to the point where I'm, I'm, I'm having to get wigs and I'm having to dress certain ways and I'm having to do these kinds of things just so I can walk down the street and feel not necessarily safe but just not as much at risk. Mm -hmm. It just blows me out. I can't imagine myself being in a position like that. And it's terrifying, like, it's terrifying knowing that this is happening, that it's, it's terrifying hearing this, like, face to face with you guys and going, look, this is, this is your lived reality. This is, this is your life. This is what you guys have to deal with. For no, um, like, you should, like, for no reason. There's no yeah. reason why you should have reason. to deal with that, but you are dealing yeah. with that. And that just, I, I can't, I just can't, like... I mm -hmm. can't wrap my head around um, how horrible that must be for you guys. Do you mm -hmm. feel as if part of these like microaggressions and um, part of the um, the very overt racism that you guys deal with on a daily basis? Do you think that part of that is because you are um, very identifiably as female, or um, do you think that's part of it, or or because you are? Um, female women of colour, or is it just because you just have a different skin tone to the majority? I mean, it's definitely about my skin, because I'm a woman, I'm black, and I'm queer, so, like, I can, I feel comfortable walking down the street holding my girlfriend's hand, but I don't feel comfortable, like, just being my skin color because that's what i've experienced the most um issue with i feel and like just in the and it's also like because we see so many examples of black be people being killed and i even grew up like thinking oh i want to change this society we live in i want to make it so that we can be equal like actually equal not just on paper equal but actually equal where like i don't have to like like what you're saying is like amazing that you're saying oh i could just walk down the street no one's gonna i don't have to change myself no one's gonna think of me a certain way i can just oh i could just be me what i would i that would be just wonderful to have grown up that way but um I think the like just seeing so many examples of black people being killed for just voicing what really experience and just calling out like the injustices like like, I grew up being like, oh, I want to be like MLK, like Martin Luther King, but I'm afraid because if I voice my opinions, I will die. Like, I grew up as a child thinking I can't they voice my opinions killed, or I will die. They killed Kennedy. Yeah. I mean, they, they uh, Ted Kennedy, I, I don't know which Kennedy it was. I think they killed Kennedy too. Like, and that's American royalty right there. So, yeah, mm. it's, mm -hmm. their whole family was like our quote unquote royalty. Like, mm. Clear standing they, up they for not they, for standing what, up for yeah. for civil rights issues for mm -hmm. black people and they they knocked him out so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who are we we're just like mm -hmm. regular people <laughs> right mm -hmm. um i would have to second that it's just a skin issue mm -hmm. um for the fact that there are just a, a variety of other black women that have passed away that have looked just like me and mm -hmm. they've had extensions just like me they've gone to college just like me um they spoke well just like me so you know it, it, they are they were women just like me there's no mm -hmm. other other issue other than the fact that we all are black as well so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep that's it's literally that's it and even like in America, in China, like here in Australia, it's like every racism or like every, well, yeah, every issue, like I always am like, is it because I'm black? Like I don't, I rarely if ever think, is it because I'm a woman? Is it because I'm queer? Like 
it's so funny that those are like not even issues for me. Like I know some people like, especially if you're like a white woman where, you know, then you can see like, oh, like this white man is being treated better than me. Like it must be because I'm a woman. But for me, like, I feel like being black is so much like, like every country I've been to, people are like against black people, some sort of prejudice at one point or another towards black people. Like racism it's, it's is like, everywhere. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it, and it's just it, like also yeah. not yeah what what Jesse? oh i was just i was just gonna say so for, for yourself um being that you are um black and you are um queer and that you are a woman you're finding that the um the aggressions against you and the um the stereotypes and and the the racism you're, you're seeing that is overriding anything else like if you were white maybe you would be um treated um differently because you're a woman or because you are mm -hmm. queer but the fact that you are black is overriding everything else that you're experiencing mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely and it was it's funny because when i was a kid like i was in an all-black environment because i think my parents thought it would be safer and it's also like Segregated. It's like, where can I afford to live with other black people? Uh, so that's also it. Like, white people don't want you to live with them in their neighborhood, go to their schools. Like, even within my school district, it was like the black school, and then all the three other schools were white schools. And you go there, and it's like 95% white. And then my school is like 99% black. Like, it's just like all so segregated. Um, but I feel like in my school, like I would talk white, I would be all the you know black on the outside, white on the inside. I don't know, Jessica, if you got that too. But uh, like I was an Oreo there, um, yeah. A bit different though, because um, mm. I grew up. Well, okay, like so, like my parents divorced when I was little, and then my mom moved to Baltimore, which is mm. like a very city um and then my dad moved out to columbia maryland and i don't know if you don't you probably don't know anything about columbia but it was made by this man named james rouse okay and he was like ahead of his time and wanted the city to be like uh like a ethnic haven for like everyone and so everyone oh. lives in columbia Maryland, um, of all different ethnicities and genders and sexuality, it doesn't matter. Um, so I had like a, a really mm. interesting, like, you know, mix. I would go to see my mom in Baltimore, which is just, you know, black, black, black. And then I would go to Columbia <laughs> and it would be like, you know, oh, wow, this is so diverse. Um, mm. And I went to school out there because mm. the school systems were better uh, than the ones in, in Baltimore City. So, yeah, but I mean, kids still made fun. You know, um, that that's, I think that's like a thing that kids do. Kids are just rude and mean mm -hmm. for a time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, um, True. yeah, but, but I can remember it cause Maryland is still like below the Mason Dixon line. If you know anything about like how they separate the North and the South. And so like, there are certain pockets of Maryland. Okay. So there's a line that separates like a surveyor's line, right? That separates the Northern states from the Southern states. And anyone listening is from the United States will probably be like, Maryland is not the South. But according mm -hmm. to that line, it technically is. Um, right. And Southern states that are like, Maryland is not the South. Okay, who cares? Um, mm -hmm. Cause you know, they, they, they will then they'll, they'll dive, they'll dive into like civil war BS. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why are we capping for the civil war? Like, mm -hmm. you, it's a, like the traitors, war of all time like i don't even know why we're talking about this but my 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 point was that there's certain pockets in maryland where again the, those moments where it's like you had to watch out you had to be kind of like you know on your best behavior you had to talk white like those pockets are kind of still in maryland like we still oh. have plantations in oh. maryland um yeah, I remember going down to like certain areas and wanting to go to like the gift shops and you know you had to like keep your hands out in front of you and stuff mm -hmm. like that and kind of be like on your on your you know p's and q's because mm -hmm. if anything happened you know you were going to get looked at basically. even if you did something or not like it was mm -hmm. just going to be you mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's just annoying and there's no other reason for it because there's a big crowd of people and why is it if something happens I'm the first one you see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the thing that happened was like well away from me. Like, mm -hmm. it, but I didn't. I, 
in the front of the room, the thing happened in the back of the room, you're still looking at me mm-hmm. even though the sound came from the back mm-hmm. of the room. Come on, guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like that is just like kind of annoying. Yeah, like, you know, Marilyn is, is a bit interesting in that it's kind of diverse, but there's still little areas where it's where it's super country. Um, certain areas where there's the clan. Mm. That was... Mm. Um, mm-hmm. And there's like, you know, Baltimore and DC, which is like super, super, you know, um, diverse and full of different people. So it just depends on where you live in that mm-hmm. state. Do you find that mm-hmm. um, you um, are experiencing the same as Janaira in that any kind of prejudice against yourself um, because you are a woman is um, completely washed out by the fact that you are black? Are you finding that there are people who are um, a, uh, prejudiced against you more so because of your skin colour than mm-hmm. um, the fact that you're a woman? Uh, I would say yes. It's like 50-50. It depends. Um, I'm mm. in like... I would say it's like every single time, but when I notice it, I'm like, this has to be because of the fact that I'm black because there's no other reason why mm-hmm. it would be any mm-hmm. other reason. Like, f- so like I'm in IT, right? So like sometimes it'll be because I'm a woman because IT mm-hmm. tends to be like a male dominated field, mm-hmm. right? So like, mm-hmm. like oh, like it, it, if it happens, it doesn't happen that often. Um, but then other ones, I'm like, okay, well, there's no other reason for this because I'm not like in a male dominated field. This is a, this mm-hmm. is a social issue, me being in the store and you feeling like, might take your stuff mind you i'm mm-hmm. in I, my it job pays me pretty well so i don't need to steal your crap <laughs> i can just mm-hmm. go buy it if i wanted to so it has to be because african-american store and you're not used to seeing african-americans in this store that so it's like like 50 mm-hmm. 50 i would say for me and the thing that i saw like i've seen like a meme a few times that mm-hmm. i've like just the like it just like blew my mind like when I saw it. It's just come out like recently, like that I've seen it at least. It is like like people will be so upset, like, oh my god, these people are looting, they're stealing from these stores. But then they show Africa, which has been looted and stolen from for centuries, and it's like, okay, like you looted all of this stuff in the first place. We built all of this stuff in the first place, and now you're upset that we're stealing it like that people are stealing it back like like because for me it's like looting is not like like we're like i don't know who's looting i don't know why people are looting but a lot of people are protesting and then people are looting because it's convenient i don't know but like if anything um, you haven't given us reparations yeah. we have a right to this stuff yeah jessica hello, okay. hello? can you hear me <laughs> Yeah, I can hear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I saying? couldn't hear. I don't know what happened. Okay, good. You're there. I don't know what happened. Like, the, like the video went out. I was like, "Hello, am I still there?" <laughs> okay. No, for, for for the protests, there's like two or three groups that are like straight extremists, and they're mm. coming into the protests, and they are the ones starting the looting, and they're writing mm. things like "Black Lives Matter," and mm. they're they're setting up. Um, bricks just like strategically placed near like stores and putting them there so that uh they'll come out in within the protests but in order to incite people uh Mm. and and get them to start looting that is what we have like Mm. video of that happening Mm. and it's like you know now black people are recognizing it They'll, when they see those people that are doing that, they'll get them on camera and they'll like tell them to stop. Mm. Some girl almost got like hurt. Some white girl almost got hurt the other day because she was standing in front of a, um, either it's like a Wells Fargo or a Bank of America or something. And the guy was there with mm-hmm. like a hammer or a bat trying to break down the, the window. And she was like, stop it. Like, this isn't what mm. this is about. You're, you're mm-hmm. taking away from the movement. And so now, like, there's been a, a ton of video showing that like it's like mm. Antifa or. You know, like right wing Bulagu people, uh, undercover cops that are out there, mm. like you know, and and they'll just be out there, um, starting like fighting mm. in order to incite the protesters to riot. But the protesters aren't catching up quickly, mm. so what was that that's that's making me happy. That you mentioned? 
the the um let me see if i get it right hold on i think it's boogaloo group and then, so one no it's like it's like uh, let me let me say okay okay so it's boogaloo okay b o o g a l o o okay and so um a- according to google um, there are a variety of extremists and fringe movements and subcultures that like want to incite like war and violence and like like civil war ab- amongst the nation. And so they want to like rebel against the against the government and they use whatever like means necessary in order to to mm-hmm. do that. And so they they're like paying protests. Mm-hmm. They're paying not paying protests. They're paying rioters to go down into the cities yeah. and like mm-hmm. destroy it. Yeah, they pay people, and then you have. You know, a lot of that and it's like that's not mm. what this is about and it's just it's annoying but people yeah. are catching on to it taking video of it and mm. um it's not deterring the protests because they're still continuing so but i say keep it going so that we can get this problem you know like solved yeah. because there's no reason that there should be um you know like a police officer should be judge jury and executioner like you were supposed to be tried by a jury of our peers and we're supposed to be have our day in court if we're doing something wrong and you're taking that away from people it's mm. not right it's it's Just, really ugh. really interesting um to see the comparisons between america and the rest of the world but especially for me um america and australia mm. because um we actually had mm. and this and it was absolutely beautiful i love this we had a um a visual slash kind of peaceful protest for George Floyd recently, uh, yesterday, um, and it was just in the middle of, um, my town at the moment, which is the capital city of the state that I live in, um, and mm-hmm. it was, it was just amazing to see so many people of all different kinds just rock up, um, it was, it was mm-hmm. so much to the point that we had to keep filing people through, um, like circling people yeah. up because there were just going to be too many in a too tight a space, so they were trying to keep the whole social distancing um, thing going. Uh, but hundreds and hundreds of people showed up for it, and it wasn't just because of all the injustice that um, that is that is and has um, happened in America, but also over here in Australia. Um, and it was amazing to see that. But a lo- I've spoken to, I've spoken to quite a lot of people over here. Um, and obviously it's not happening in our country. We don't have mm. that, um, same worry that, um, I guess, uh, a lot of people in America would feel at the moment, but we're looking at these protests. We're looking at these riots and going, just fucking bring on another civil war at this point, because mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. The, um, the, that's what it's on, looking like. It, just, it, it, it's yeah. blowing, it's blowing all of us away because like, how, how is this? still happening how are they like i saw a photo yesterday of the rubber bullets that the policemen are using mm-hmm. and i'm thinking they're tiny oh little God. fuckers they are the size of my so head. did i they're huge. I don't they're know. huge and i had i have two cousins that are in like unrest mm. now because mm. they both got hit by rubber bullets mm. just like this past week Mm. Both of my cousins were out protesting, and both of them got hit with rubber bullets. Mm. And my thing is, the cops are supposed. There's a way in which you're supposed to use those rubber bullets. You're supposed to point them at the ground and then at an angle, so that they'll hit the body at like an angle and it won't cause that much damage. But mm. what the cops are doing are taking those rubber bullets and doing basically kill shots if they were like legit bullets, because where the people are showing where they're being hit is like in the middle of the forehead. Mm in the neck, oh, you yeah. know, on the side mm. of the face. And, you know, why are you doing kill shots if this is supposed to be the mm. non-lethal way to, to stop someone right. who's being a bit rowdy during a, during a protest where maybe you feel, you know, like your life is being threatened or whatever. But, mm. I mean, that's not even the case. This is just out here just shooting people. You can see shooting people with the rubber bullets, like, as soon as just be, like, just mm. shooting people like that. But, like, mm. you can even see, like, how they've been hurting, like, children. They just yeah. knocked over, like, an old man just the yeah. other day mm. and was bleeding from his head. Mm. And it's, like, mm. you know, I, I like to use, like, our old, like, you know, um, our old sayings, like, we we, have, we we joke about our old African American sayings, like you know we tried to tell you, but I don't want to use that because it's kind of like rubbing it in. But um, mm-hmm. try to try to mention, I never wanted police brutality to hit other mm-hmm. groups of people. Like it's enough, like uh, mm-hmm. it's hitting black people. Like mm-hmm. 
there was a, there was a video and I, I know I posted it on my Facebook page of uh, a man, I think his name was Daniel Shaver. And he was just going into a hotel to fumigate for termites. And this lady mm. called because the, the, pool that they use in order to fumigate is like a long rod thing where you have like the um like termite you know like yeah. mm. bottle, so, right and so it looks like a gun it looks like a gun but it's not yeah it looks like one but it's not so the lady got confused and called the cops and then the cops came out and Dan and Shaver was like I'm just here doing my job you need to look that one up and you probably mm. you might just start bawling like I know when I saw that mm. one I was in tears and I'm like and this is why Black Lives Matter slash All Lives mm-hmm. Matter should be a thing but All Lives Matter kind of mm-hmm. is like taking away from Black Lives Matter but I know Black mm-hmm. Lives Matter I think showed up for, for the protest for him because he was following mm-hmm. every single command that the cops gave him and they still mm-hmm. shot him and he was on the ground he was already mm-hmm. on the ground just following his commands it was it, mm-hmm. that, that one is terrible it's mm-hmm. absolutely terrible I, I and no, I, I just I about that at all you need to go watch that one. You might. I, I say, I don't want to watch anymore because it's enough for my mental state. But exactly, that one, that one broke my whole soul. Mm. I mean, he was, he was like, so you know, the cop gave him an order. He's like, okay, I'm going down. Okay, now put you now crawl on the ground. He's like, okay, crawl forward, crawl backward. What do you want me to do? I'm, I'm confused. Like. Mm. But, and then after that, he like was like, well, I'm trying to figure out which one to do. I think he moved his hand like this, like just a little bit. They took him right on out. It's just that's insane. It's, it's insane. It's terrible. And police brutality, like I mean, it just needs to stop. Like, there's no reason why these cops should be able, especially if you're in a position where you know you can't hurt someone. You're already mm-hmm. on the ground and, mm-hmm. and in the position of of like surrendering, right? Mm-hmm. No reason why you should be doing stuff like that. Then mm-hmm. it's like, and they're never held accountable. And it takes it takes how many days of protest to hold a police officer accountable? It's ridiculous. And our taxpayer dollars pay for their their salaries. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't want my taxpayer dollars to fund this anymore. This is some BS. Mm-hmm. Exactly. They take a lot of money. They take a lot of federal monies for that. Like, uh, uh-uh. uh. Mm-hmm. Like, we need to fix it. Exactly. Yeah, if you have time, watch that one. Yeah, I definitely. Watch that. Uh, I, I, just I, to I, honor I, his name. Yeah. What was his name? Do you know his name? I mean, Shaver, but let me let me find it. I'm pretty sure it's Daniel Shaver. Daniel Shaver. Yes, mm. it's Daniel Shaver. Mm-hmm. Daniel. Yeah. He was twenty. But- he was twenty six, and the verdict was that he was not the cop that did it. Was that he was not guilty? Just, yeah. What the hell? Yeah. Like. It was oh, like it's like why are you God. holding us accountable for anything when you can't hold yourselves accountable? Like, right. how are you just able to literally get away with murder? The crime, like the punishments you're doing, never fit the crime if there even was a crime. Like it's just, right. it's just disappoint. It's just disappointing that you can't even exist. People are constantly ready to kill you, ready to be afraid of you, ready to dehumanize you just because of like this what they've learned from each other like hey those black people are bad oh those black people are trying to kill oh but then they end up being bad end up killing end up doing all the things that they're so afraid of us for us possibly doing they actually do it they actually kill when we're just walking around like and it's just it's too many examples of this like we gotta change the scripts like and it's just frustrating because it feels like all the people who are in power want to keep it this way because they're mad that we're not their slaves anymore like they're just so upset that we're not going to work for free and that we demand rights and that we are humans just like they are it just upsets them that like they're like well you can't work for me for free either i'm gonna incarcerate you so then you can work for free because people who are in jail are allowed to be enslaved, like enslaved, like that, like it's in our constitution. If you're in jail, it's okay to be a slave. So either we're going to kill you, we're going to enslave you, we're going to do something because, because what? Like, because why? You want to keep your power. But the maintenance of the status quo is the main. Yeah. They just want to maintain, like, 
does this make you happy? Can you sleep well at night? But they somehow do. I think they're sleeping just fine because they rationalize and justify it, say, oh, well, they were possibly reaching for a gun. They're possibly, to, like, like, how do you, like, you just, like, they, they do backflips to logic, lo logic this stuff to be acceptable, to logic murder as acceptable when they wouldn't want their mom to be murdered. They wouldn't want to be murdered for just walking, for just existing, for just mm -hmm. doing their jobs. They wouldn't want to be killed for that, but then they can't, like, pe so many people can't see that the human next to them is just, like, has a heart, has a mind, just like they do, that we are all equal, we are all, like, we are all one. But we have so many, like, delusions that separate us from each other, like, say, oh, well, your skin color, oh, your hair, oh, you've got long hair, well, I guess you don't deserve as many rights, or you aren't because you're not exactly like me, you don't deserve this or that, but we all, like, if you can just see that person over there wants to be a good person, they want to do the right thing just like you, then I don't know. But, like, how do you change people's mindsets? Like, how do you change, like, people to realize that we are all human, we are all one? You know, I feel like that... Yeah. Once I, I mean, I, I, I'm, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, like, I, I genuinely feel like, I don't know about Gen Xers, right? But I, I don't know about them because I feel like mm. a lot of them are your like barbecue Beckys and poolside patties out here. Um, I'm, however, I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> barbecue Beckys. Really are. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, really enough. are. Oh, All right. Yeah. Um, that's However, funny. I feel like our generation of millennials slash Gen Zers mm -hmm. are really, really keen on changing the narrative of how we yeah. relate to one another. I, I like yeah. as a as an educator, I, I was a former educator. I've been educated for like yeah. ten years. The past like yeah. two, three years, I haven't been in it. I'm now changed yeah. to IT. I just need more money, y'all. A girl has yeah. bills, so um, <laughs> um, right, so like. <laughs> But like as an as an mm. educator, it was amazing to see my Gen Z students being so mm. like loving and kind mm. to one another. Now sometimes they can be little; they could have been little like shits a little mm. bit, but um, the majority of the time, kids are kids, right? Yeah. But like majority of the time, they were so much nicer. Like mm. like back in like the back in the nineties slash early two thousands, when you had beef with somebody, you'd be like see you outside at three like you'd be ready to like you know mm. bum, 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 go to the mm. bow, bows, right but like not like that they're so much cooler mm. they talk about things like they're more open mm. they're more res they're, they're more like respectful of, of other people's differences and i feel like it's kudos to like possibly younger gen xers that were like maybe like 75 on up to like the 80s and then like the millennials because yeah. we're like not about it we're not we're not about having our children be little you know assholes out here so I, oh. I genuinely feel like we're gonna do we're gonna do okay then there's like a huge group of like oh you know, unfortunately like gen x's who have raised you know kids that are terrible and you see them on tiktok as well and it's like i don't i feel like education would just help then also the losing of job I guess because they put their stuff on Facebook, like you know, this is, and they really shouldn't, because Facebook is not playing, Twitter is not playing. They were ready to like come for your whole life, so I feel like people should really pay attention to that, and not like, you know, put their stuff out there like that. But do it, and you know, show everybody what kind of you know jerk that you are. But I feel like our generation is gonna be the one to really change it. I mean, oh. we, we already have been. I mean, I, we, I we're we're going to be in the history book for this, so. Even, even, oh god, even, um, there was Ice-T. He recently, um, recorded this video of, of this, of this girl who is just talking to her parents about the systemic racism in America and, and how bad it really is uh. and how the protests are going and everything. And her parents are not having a bar of it, like, nah, that's crap, yada, yada, yada. And she's mm. like, oh, no, you guys are idiots. I have actually watched this. I've seen this happen. You've told me to mm. turn it off. This means that you guys are the idiots. I'm the ones. I'm the one that's actually mm. it. I know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. And they just not listening to it. But mm -hmm. it was, it was so wonderful to see someone so mm. young still doing that. Um, and and the people of this next generation, they 
most of, most of them mm. are fairly fairly decent. There are some fucking idiots out there. <laughs> and the no mean, right? Oh, like, <laughs> like, so, you know, mm. let's let's start down in a couple of tide pods, but like we we see that, and there are always going to be the bad apples. There are always going to be um, parts of every generation that are just bad. But um. I think with every with every generation that's coming up, we're seeing mm-hmm. less and less of those bad apples. I mean, mm. my generation compared to my parents and compared to their parents, it's definitely mm-hmm. changed a lot. And a lot of it has been because people have been speaking up and um, people have mm. been normalising um, the equality that everyone has a right to, but we just haven't seen. Mm. Whereas... I- um, the biggest, oh, the biggest fucking example that absolutely got me, of just sheer utter fucking stupidity, um, mm. and feel free to swear as much as you want. This is this is a stream where you can just go because I didn't know, and no, I was yeah, 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 co- yeah. I was totally holding it in. Oh, yeah, no, no. Um, a little bit. No, like, I, I will I will absolutely say this unabashedly. I know that there are some um, parts of America where saying this particular word is going to be a bit a bit harsh. Um, it's very common here the in Australia. C word. It's the C word, yes. Um, but, oh. and I'm going to say, oh cunt is a fucking mm. cunt. He can go fuck himself. I love that mood. word. He's a <laughs> I hate it. Like, the, oh, like the, idea, the idea of him as a person just fucking infuriates me. And I can't, I can't even imagine being, being you guys and being in America and having to deal with this shit. But... The idea of he goes from a press conference to go, oh, I'm going to do something special now. Tear gasses the fuck out of his fucking out of the processes right outside the fucking White House. Mm. Walks, he's like fucking walks in art, surrounded by armed guards and secret service agents to a church nearby mm. for a photo mm. op in which the mm. pastor of the church is kicked off the fucking land. He's not even allowed into his own church. I... Trump doesn't his go church. In. He doesn't even pray. He doesn't do any of that shit. He stands out front yeah. with a Bible. He specifies his a Bible, not his Bible. He is uh, Bible. Oh, yeah. I noticed that Bible. too. Bible. I noticed like, that oh, too. Oh, it's a Bible. He doesn't even open a the Bible. fucker up and it's holds it upside <laughs> fucking down. Stop. Stop. Oh, I, didn't <laughs> notice that. I just noticed that he held it like like a weirdo. Like who holds a Bible like this? It's a Bible. Some, it's a Bible. I'm going to get burned to death if he opens it. That's what, that's what You're it You're so stupid. <sighs> and, oh my god. And then the, the pastor was on the back lawn giving, um, he had set up like a, like a rest station or like a med center type thing for the protesters. Um, and yeah, they kicked him off. They kicked him off the, um, of his own church lawn. I can't imagine. With some BS. I just was like, <laughs> what was is going on? Thing. Really did, and so you know the mayor of um of DC just was like, well, you know what, for Tat, and just renamed um Pennsylvania Avenue as Black Lives Matter Ave, and then oh, put yes. it on the ground. You need to go <laughs> yes. check it out. Yeah. yeah, put it on the ground. The 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 road leading up to uh the the White House says in big yellow letters Black Lives yes. Matter. So every time Trump oh, looks yeah. outside of his windows to see the the street that used to be Pennsylvania Ave, it's Black Lives Matter Ave, and there's Black that Lives Matter amazing. on the front of the road. That's, that's that, awesome. Mm, I love that's that. Literally, amazing. just she just did it. I I, I feel bad like because I um I did hear about this and did a little bit of research. Um. The guy, the, the way, uh, the powers that um, the different mayors and governors and elected representatives of the various different cities and states around America have to um, stop, say, like the National Guard and whatnot coming in and, and the uh, president trying to basically, uh, you know, throw his fucking tiny dick around is pretty. It's it's, it's pretty extensive. Like there's there's a, there's a lot of sovereignty you guys have. Uh, but unfortunately, the mayor of DC doesn't. He, mm. he is almost a figurehead because there's not much real power that you can actually have when the president is mm. bloody right there and can just go, well, actually, no, fuck you, I'm going to do a lot. Mm. Um, but so mm. it, he, he didn't have the capacity to, just, to stop Trump tear gassing the protesters. He, he didn't have the capacity to stop the okay. guard coming in and just fucking shit up. Like, But he mm. did, uh, he was able to do some things, and it's good to see he was able to do that. Like even when, when the mayor of the fucking city in which 
the White House fucking is. That when the mayor of the hmm. like, capital of America is like, mm. oh, fuck this shit, like, how bad, how bad mm-hmm. does it need to be? Like, how bad does it need to get? Like, mm-hmm. fucking... He should, mm-hmm. he should just go to his little bunker and bloody shoot himself. Just go ahead, because... No one's gonna miss I'm it. I'm mad that Trump wanted to be in, in that bunker and he was like, I'm worried about, about the protests. I'm going into my bunker, my secret bunker underneath the right. underneath the White House. I was like, This is not right. secret anymore. Stupid. Like, what are you doing? Uh, Why would you tell where it is? Uh well he's not he doesn't he's not the smartest person. But no, he definitely yeah. Is. When I, I saw that he was yeah, just... when I saw he was being elected, I was like, "We've got like th- you've got to be joking me! Like, is this what we've come to?" But yeah, uh, I when I saw that, it... I was like, mm, "It's time to go." And then I came back like, <laughs> like, like a year later, like two years later, I think. Um, and I was like, okay. "I just want to see what happens in November because I feel okay. like, as you know." As American, especially like a, a, a still kind of young American, I feel like I can't mm. claim the old title yet. Seasoned, <laughs> but not old. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, seasoned American, yeah. yeah. Seasoned, like, yeah. Seasoned, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you know, um, you're like, you know, like you're, you're level fifty. You're not like a hundred yet. No, right, right. Look right. like, like a nice, like a so. like a nice, nice, a nice young, a nice young fifty, forty, thirty, in the thirties, uh, guys. Don't give me age, okay. <laughs> um, I'm terrible with ideas. But, uh, I would never been able to guess. Thank you. That's, that's, uh, that's nice. Appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Um, I just feel like we all need to get out there and vote. And I just was talking to my dad, and he was like, there's a ton of like Republican seats, like the conservative people's seats up for grabs this election. Because every presidential election, you can, you can vote out some people. I'm like, yo, let's figure out who to like get out of the, you know, Congress mm-hmm. and the Senate if we can, and then uh, mm-hmm. uh, put in some some liberals slash, you know, moderate Democrats in there, and and see what we can do. Because that'd mm-hmm. be like, I think that's where the change is gonna come. And then of course midterm elections in your local, you know, mm-hmm. elections definitely matters a lot too. I mean, I feel like we as a people just don't pay attention. It's like, ooh, the presidential election, let's go. But that he doesn't mm-hmm. have that much power. It's your, it's mm-hmm. your state and, and your local officials that have the most power to do the stuff that you want done. And if mm-hmm. those jokers aren't doing what you want done, and again, there's no federal monies, it's just your money. <laughs> and how mm-hmm. are you going to take my money and not do what I say? It's not okay. <laughs> so I need you to do mm-hmm. what I say. The, the, I'm really the, big about the, this The system now. in America has always just kind of surprised me. Like... Mm. The fact that the electoral makes no sense exists is just oh my dumb. god! Mm-hmm. See what they're trying Still to exists. do with it, yeah. but it's it's dumb mm-hmm. because it's meant to be I don't yeah. be voted in by the popular vote. That's, that's that's the way it works in mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. popular vote. vote. And he lost the fucking yeah, vote. Yeah, that should matter like, more. Lost that, it. That yeah, should, that, of like, course. If the majority of Americans didn't want him in. Why the fuck is Doesn't he make in? Sense. Yeah. That's he not is. how exactly. an actual democracy exactly. should be fucking working. That is just exactly. fucking ridiculous. I mean, and they should allow, and, and it, doesn't, it doesn't happen this way in Australia either, but they should mm. allow, if if one particular person, doesn't matter if they're um, uh, uh, part of the Democratic Party or Republican Party or who the fuck cares, mm. party, or even if yeah. they're just an independent and they are on I... their own, if that person wins the possible it's more vote, the vote. America, they get in. Fuck everything else. Right. That one person, mm-hmm. the majority of Americans want that one person in, that one person gets in. Then that one person can pick whoever the fuck they want to be part of their cabinet. And just, you know, mm-hmm. part of their stuff. Like, that, that is how it should be working, because it's like, okay, that's what the majority of people want, that's what the majority of people get. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't even work that way in Australia. Like, um, the, the only mm-hmm. people who get to basically go for it are the leaders of the Labour and Liberal Party over here in Australia, um, and oh. which is fucking terrible, but mm. it, that's, that is what it is, and um, mm-hmm. unless there's massive change, I don't see that happening. But actually, I, as, as an addendum to that, um, it's interesting seeing 
And I've I've had my own personal feelings about um, the whole uh, Second Amendment and how that is carried out in America and and the culture surrounding um, guns in America. I don't think mm. it is um, entirely conducive. We in Australia have not had um, a firearms related death to anywhere near the scale of America in over thirty years. Um, we mm-hmm. have not had a mass shooting in about 30 years. 30 mm-hmm. years. I'll say that again for everyone out there. It is insane. It's like my whole life. Every week. Every, yeah, every, true. Every fucking week I'm younger than that. Yeah. But, yeah. um... Mm-hmm. Like, Jesus. oh, that, that, is a, that is a whole separate discussion. But it's um, interesting that those that were protesting using their Second Amendment rights um, to mm. carry guns and like, oh yeah, we're, we're going to mm. do it on freedom and blah blah blah, like, fucking mm. blah, blah. they were protesting mm. the um, injustice of, oh, we have state side, um, and mm. then they're yeah. silent and haircuts and haircuts and yeah. but they're silent mm. now. whatever the hell else they were talking about, they but they're silent. Of course, they they, they always are because <laughs> why um. the majority of people toting that shit are fucking racist. That's what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. They, they want what they of want. Course. And um, mm-hmm. they're mm-hmm. very bigoted in, in their views. And I don't see anyone going, uh, you know what? Let's strap some fucking guns on and let's go out to the process. You don't see that. Mm-hmm. They, and they never will. I mean, it just shows that they are just the biggest bunch of hypocrites mm. and um, assholes on the face of the planet. Um, they constantly talk about all lives matter and mm-hmm. they are like the biggest bunch of I don't give a shit about anyone's life but my own. Um, so long mm-hmm. as I'm not inconvenienced, as long as I'm mm-hmm. not inconvenienced, I'm fine. Um, mm. And my thing is that you, they can say all lives matter. That's not my point. Because my point is is that <laughs> they, they can say like certain instances matter when it suits mm-hmm. like their agenda. Mm-hmm. So like, like there's another really good meme that was going around. Um, and it was like when the Boston terrorist attack happened at that Boston uh, marathon, mm. I think it was a couple years ago. Yeah. Nobody was talking about no all lives matter then. They were talking mm-hmm. about we stand with Boston, okay? When the shooting mm-hmm. happened in Las Vegas, they were like, mm. no one's talking about no all lives matter then. It was mm-hmm. we stand with Vegas. When, when that shooting mm-hmm. happened in France, okay? Mm-hmm. Everybody mm-hmm. changed their Facebook profile picture to be like, we stand with France, we love France, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah. You know, now all of a sudden, all lives matter all lives when matter. it's black yeah. lives matter so what the hell is mm-hmm. the issue because i now can see that you are out here able to make the connection with understanding that certain issues just need a bit more like understanding and a bit more like you know respect and talking to be talked about in this way yeah. and mm-hmm. and now that it's black lives matter now you have a problem okay so then and you want to convince me that you're not racist mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> right uh, <mm-mm. laughs> no i think it's a piece of shit actually yeah there mm-hmm. were no there were no men's rights um, activists until there were women's mm. rights activists. You know, there was there was, mm. there was, there was, no, there was no straight pride until there was gay pride. Mm-hmm. Gay pride is so stupid because... Get drowned out? Like, no, obviously not. Oh. That's not going to fucking happen. It's these mm. things need to be brought to the attention of um, of the majority of the world. Like, they Everyone, need to have yeah, exactly. because they've been oppressed, because all these people mm-hmm. have been oppressed before, they need these these times and these moments to be able to mm-hmm. speak up and to be able to have pride in who mm-hmm. they are yeah, and be able to celebrate mm-hmm. that. And yet, yeah, a lot of people are saying, yeah, all lives matter. Well, no fucking shit, all lives matter. That's not what they're saying. It's, they, no lives can't matter until all lives actually do. Mm-hmm. So black lives yeah. have mm-hmm. to matter. And, you know, mm-hmm. other, and the various people of, like, all other ethnic, ethnicities... Uh, can't say that right. Um, they have to. <laughs> they have to matter as well before all lives mm-hmm. care. Because all lives don't matter. Yeah. If if hey. some don't, if one doesn't, if one mm-hmm. life doesn't matter, hey. all life, you know. And and there's a lot of people like a lot of people spouting all this like religious nonsense and crap. And I saw I saw yeah. an amazing fucking post. I saw someone um, say you know like <laughs> oh um, oh Jesus wouldn't have done this or blah blah blah. And I saw someone going. Okay, he literally like almost like quoting word for word the parable of the lost sheep. Mm. Like, well, Jesus left the ninety nine safe ones to go to the one and bring mm. it back, and I'm like, that's mm. fucking yeah. right. 
because it's exactly what happens. You know, we're saying that, yes, the 99 are safe, the 99 are fine, the 99 are great, but the one is missing. The one is hurt, the one is alone, afraid, and the one needs to be brought back, brought up, and listened to and heard. And a lot of people are just missing that point entirely. They could be the main people that stay in church every single Sunday. They go to their, like, every Sunday book club. They never read their book. It makes no sense. I don't understand them at all. <laughs> I get on my nerves so much. Like, I, I swear. Like, because I'm growing up Catholic. And I was just saying, like, growing up Catholic and, like, having, like, not read the book that much. Meet, like, evangelicals who basically tore apart Christianity in order to, like, what they wanted and then they they like mm. don't read their bible it just doesn't make any sense to me why don't you just come back to be catholic we don't read it there mm. either ah! mm. okay i'm done i i i i'm loving the same oops um no, I'm, I'm i'm christian myself but um i'm loving the same mm. that um and it, it always happens with every fucking issue that a fair majority of i guess i guess most um people who are Christian or those who share very similar beliefs like um, Catholics and whatnot are just bloody badgering the whole thing. That, that It's that whole like oh. belief of, oh, I'm better than you, or oh, this, that, and the next. Oh. And it's a super self-righteous just, thing. Exactly. It's like... It's, oh. they're, they're bringing yeah. out the worst in people, and they're bringing oh. down um, those that are actually trying to do good. Those who um, have oh. those beliefs but have the right kind of beliefs mm -hmm. they're showing that in the right way and they're doing the right kind mm -hmm. of things like, like that pastor in the church in DC who is setting up mm -hmm. um, you know hey. stations for people and, and that's you're not mm -hmm. hearing about that you're hearing about the ones that are doing terrible things and uh, being mm -hmm. terrible people um, yeah. but there are not what do you think about that like with media and how the media mm -hmm. like doesn't portray both sides what do you think about about that about how basically like in the news you're always seeing the negative stuff that's happening and like whatever bleeds yeah. leads and stuff and that's what i was saying the other day it's so frustrating watching the news because you'll see this person was shot and killed but then you never see a week later and the officer was brought to justice or like you just like they don't show the end or of anything they just show oh this is the horrible thing that just happened they don't show like Oh, maybe some justice came from it or maybe you know here's something good like someone in your community just did this great thing mm -hmm. for society but you don't see that like you just see like i i hate the news and so because of that like, it's just so really interesting recently it was mm. um the news news doesn't the, the <clears throat> news doesn't cover things that don't sell um mm. violence sells it's um, true um, mm. you know like uh, racism sells, uh, sexism mm. sells, yeah. it all sells, mm. hope doesn't, mm. joy doesn't, mm. and there's little fluff pieces at the end of the yeah. day sometimes, but that's, that's it, and, mm -hmm. and there's people just crying mm. out, like, going, just give us hope, give us something mm -hmm. to hold yeah. to, give us something to look forward mm. to, give us something, not yeah. this, and it's just, just fucking yeah. Heartbreaking. Uh, I learned that from Harry Potter when <laughs> the news exists to sell what? itself. That's what that's what Rita Skeeter said to Hermione yeah. Granger when she was writing all those salacious, uh, not salacious, but like you know, like BS yeah. articles about about Harry Potter. Yeah. And and she was yeah. like, "Oh, the news exists to sell itself, silly girl. Like I'm gonna write these articles regardless of how you feel yeah. about it." I was like, "Yo, yeah. I never thought about that." That's, that's exactly yeah, I've never heard that. Like that everything that kind of happened in. Harry Potter, as much as people are really mm, having literally these days, it's happening right now. It's happening right now. Yeah. It is. It is. is brilliant. I don't know and, why people hit on her, but whatevs. Uh, I didn't read out, the book, so I'm ignorant. Transphobic things and um, whatnot that I, recently. But, um, really? No, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know that okay. either. Dang. But, um, all, why? All even, why, JK? Aside, it's, um, <laughs> all right. I, I love this. I love this. The Dumbledore's quote when he's talking um, at the end of Goblet of Fire to all the students, and it's like, the time is going to come where you have to choose between mm. what is right and what is easy. And never before in, in recent history has that ever been as true as it is now. And people, mm. are, people are choosing the hard road. They are choosing what mm. is right. This Right. Instead of mm. what's just easy. And and for myself, I mean, I 
I'm, I'm more than more than willing to admit, I've been insanely apathetic most of my life to most of this because uh, it hasn't been affecting me. It hasn't been affecting anyone I know or care about. And not even just that, it's more, I live at the bottom of the fucking world. <laughs> and uh, I am that poster child for privilege. I didn't feel like I had the right. I didn't feel like I would have made any change or done anything that would have actually affected anything. And... Uh, I don't want to live in a world where my daughters are going to grow up and have to... They won't ever experience this, but they're going to see it and the world is going to... And the world is going to keep doing this kind of stuff. And I hate the idea of that. And I hate the idea of that, the fact that my daughters are going to... That I don't want them to grow up and ask me, when the time came, what did you do? And I have to answer nothing. I can't I, stand by and do nothing. I have to speak. I, I have to do something. I have to use the platform that I have to do good mm -hmm. because if what's, mm -hmm. what's the point in having all this privilege or all this you know, all this mm -hmm. power all these all this platform and all this, what's the point in any mm -hmm. of that if I'm not using it to do something yes exactly. amen right on any exactly. means necessary Especially, yeah and I think even for me now that I'm out of America it's like I can walk down the street and not fear for myself like fear for my life that someone's just gonna shoot me or someone's gonna or, you know, the police are going to pull me over because I'm black and then, you know, who knows what's going to happen next. And even I feel like I have more privilege now than, like, black people in America who are still so, I mean, not all of us, but, like, a lot of us are still, like, so in fear. And I know I was really afraid all the time. And, it's yeah, I still feel like I'm trying to figure out what I can do, too, because for so much of my life, I've been afraid to do something because, like I said, I'm afraid I'm going to get killed for having, like, radical thoughts. But it's reaching a point where I can't be afraid anymore. Like, I have to do something or else we're just going to keep on having this recursive, you know, history repeating itself and just the status quo being maintained. And so I think, like, I guess that's where we can donate. Like, I want to donate money um, to, like, different funds i don't know if you guys have yet but i found one where you like yeah i found one where you can like donate to like like 70 or 30 different uh funds all at once and i'm like oh that's very convenient but um it's that and then also like for me i like to make music and art so that's also something that i can do like to spread like my message or a message of hope a message of change yeah. and so i guess like yeah what what do you what do you guys feel like a regular human can do like since we're not politicians we can elect the politicians we want to lead we can mm -hmm. go to protests or we can fund the people who are doing the things that we want like the grassroots organizations mm -hmm. that are actually trying to make that change that i think is so important but i'm afraid to make i can at least fund them so that they can continue to, or promote them, you know? So like, what do you all feel like is, are good steps to, in the right direction? Like, so that this doesn't just like keep repeating itself, you know? That's yeah, I mean, I think that like basically what you said, like you can find the grassroots organizations yeah. that they're on Facebook, like, you know, they pop up on your yeah. Facebook feed every now and again. Um, Mm. Definitely, like if your lane is is art and media, then I would mm -hmm. I would ch choose that. You're already comfortable with it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, like you know, whatever you feel like you can do in order to to stop the the rise of of just bigotry and supremacy is mm -hmm. is it, you feel like it's not going to do anything, but it, like it's like the movie Ants. <clears throat> at the tail end of Ants, mm. you remember that movie in Pixar, yeah. whoever made it, I can't remember. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. they take the little seed and he's like, did that hurt? And he's like, ah, no, boss, it doesn't hurt. And he's like, takes the other one, did that hurt? And he's taking like the seeds. Like, no. And he's uh. like, that doesn't hurt either. He takes the next one. He's like, does that one? And he's like, no. And he's like, how about this? And he's like, boom, yeah, all of them like bugs. come out and they like, hey, Bugs Life? Or, oh, it was a Bugs Life. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Wrong yeah, one. Yeah. Oh, it was they a Bugs Life. Yeah. They all had oh, an ant. They, they okay. I don't know. I get <laughs> get them confused. But anyway, he was like, "That's what it's like, you know. One one little person doesn't really do anything, but together, you can like they can like stop us all. So like they had to like kill all the ants or whatever. And I feel like point being is, even though you feel like it might not be anything, like doesn't matter. 
your your voice matters uh the the, the way you want to like protest and 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 help out the cause mm-hmm. matters and you know find your you know like lane and you said it's media or whatever and then just like continue to do that mm. post some stuff i'll put it on my instagram i don't have that many followers yeah. on my facebook i now i'm almost at 800 so you know yeah. they'll see oh, it okay. you know, right Get it. <laughs> <laughs> see it. And uh, yeah, mm. for, I think for me, I'm starting like to speak out more and like post more on, on Facebook. Mm. Um, and that's basically my little lane. You know, I'm, I'm trying mm. to learn how to do like my own little videos and, and podcasts with my boyfriend because um, he's la- Latino. Mm. So like I want to like incorporate the Latino perspective in with the whole mm. protest. So that's where I'm at with that yeah. um, mm. and I want to donate but I, I can't remember any name of like the groups or anything like that I know a lot of people are trying to support like all black owned like businesses mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah like local businesses right mm-hmm. yeah. um, and that That's is fair. basically it the other one I was thinking of doing was possibly owning like my own like this is back to the second amendment possibly joining like the national african-american gun association just to mm. just like be safe out here in these streets because mm-hmm. you know other other americans are kind of dangerous so mm-hmm. when you're frightened it just sucks yeah country, it's like <laughs> yeah that's I mean, yeah that's, that's just that's just nuts uh, uh I'm, I've mm. that's right a couple of friends who look over in america and i'm like just just move over here mm. just, Move over right. So I was talking to my Canadian friend. She was like, "Don't you want to move up to Vancouver?" And I was like, "You know what? <laughs> I mm. think I do. I do." Uh, <laughs> I remember, like, even Seriously, when, though. like when Trump first got into office, there was a mass exodus of just people like, "Whoa!" Like, what? And even Whoa. Justin Trudeau, yeah. the Canadian Prime Minister, is like, "Yeah, well, come on, we'll, we'll accept you. We'll come on, bring yeah. you over." That's sweet. Oh, it's mm-hmm. crashed. So many, it still crashes like uh, to this day. Like I tried to, I tried to put in my thing not too long ago. It was, it's crashed. Like it's just really, it, yeah. Like it, it stays oh, crashing. <laughs> Get out and go to Canada. Uh, okay. mm-hmm. we, everything you guys have said is spot on. I mean, we we can only mm. do what we can do. I mean, we don't have mm-hmm. to be out there at the front of the protest lines with a massive sign and just yelling at the face of a mm-hmm. bunch of uh, heavily armed cops, you know, like, we don't have mm-hmm. to do that. If we can do that, I mean, fantastic, but if we can't, there are other things we can do. Mm-hmm. We can share out mm-hmm. the stories that we see, or the photos and videos. Mm-hmm. We can mm-hmm. tell our own stories. We can um, mm-hmm. have these little moments where we are having these kinds of discussions with our friends, our family, mm-hmm. our strangers, especially our children, mm-hmm. and bringing them mm-hmm. up um, to be fighting against um, all the various different kinds of um, racism and political brutality that we see on a very daily basis. It just mm-hmm. where we can where we can. Even if even if it is just watching a live stream of a protest, because you're still there, you're still, mm-hmm. you're still um, involved, mm-hmm. yeah. you're still making a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. difference makes a bigger difference. You know, together it is going yeah. to yeah. have an effect. Yeah. And I think that's um, what mm-hmm. people need to need to remember. Even if it's you know, you, you, you could mm. you, you know you could make a couple of paintings, you know, or you could mm-hmm. you could buy a store, mm-hmm. you, could, you could buy from um, um, mm-hmm. businesses owned by various different people of color. Like you could do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. just little things you can do. So, yeah, mm-hmm. we need to keep this up. We need to um, not stop here. It doesn't stop here. It doesn't mm-hmm. ever stop. Mm-hmm. And that's been, that's been a big worry um, oh. for myself and for many others is what's it going to be like at the end mm-hmm. of the year yeah. or next year or mm-hmm. five right. years from now, ten years from now. We can't stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not just with this, mm-hmm. but with yeah. other exactly. kinds of um, causes. But the only way it changes is if, the, you know, keep fighting the fight, you know, keep pushing forward, keep, um, keep yeah. talking about this. Because, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, like, when I saw the rest of the world take up the banner for Black Lives Matter, I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, I had I never it. seen so mm-hmm. many people take up for a cause, like, around mm-hmm. the world. I mm-hmm. was like, 
Oh, this is actually like a legit thing now. <laughs> like it was mm-hmm. legit even before, yeah, yeah, but like yeah. the world has taken on notice, and it's like, yo, it's it's a it's a bit more serious than what these little like conservative bumpkins out in America were like. It's gonna die down in a little while, and I remember I had a couple friends that were telling me that, like, don't worry, it'll die down, and I was like, though, did you see, did you see the news? London, mm. Paris, Germany. Mm. <laughs> no, it's like mm. Zealand. This is in, in Latin America. How's Australia? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, uh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to need you to not say that because I, I really think people are paying attention now. Mm. No, I feel like this is different. Yeah. The different yeah, I feel feeling, like this, this is the this protest. first time that I've really felt like it's gained more traction, like not just among black people, but now like because black people, we already know, like we already experience this on the daily and we're like, yes, thank you. You're finally seeing it. Like, I, it's just hey. beautiful to see, like even people I would never think would be talking about this and now like, like, yeah, that is, I love it. I don't want it to stop. I love it. Because I, I don't want it to stop because I, Yeah, because this is the momentum that we need to give us hope because even I like lose hope being like, well, nothing's even gonna happen. If I do one little thing, you know, what's the point? Like no one's gonna even hear about, it. no one's gonna even change their stance, but like it takes every one of us, like, you know, just us and people yet, yeah, like you're saying all over the world to yeah. band together to see that, like now that they're seeing the injustice, now that there's social media, people can see this shit that we're dealing with now it's like um, i i feel more optimistic you know and even like talking to you guys you feel more optimistic like let me go and do something now because because i can and because now i'm doing something you guys changing. are doing something yeah um, mm-hmm. um, and it's beautiful I've, I've, i have like a little bet with my dad and i feel like before i was gonna win this bet to like my own like sadness um but but the bet was was to see who was going to win the next election in the united states and i was like you know these people in the in america are dumb like they're not going to be out here you know like voting for progress or change they're going to vote against their own interests again and like you know just keep them in for another like four years there's a lot of like unfortunately like smart people in the united states and so then he was like, no, 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 even other Caucasians are tired of his bullshit. Like, it's not going to work. And then, you know, COVID-19 happened. And I was like, look, Trump just sent them mm. stimulus checks. People are out here talking on the media. Mm. Like, Jesus. no, don't don't worry. We're going to we're going to we're going to keep America great. Blah, 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 blah. And then these protests happen. Now, I really feel like I might mm. lose my hundred dollars, which I hope I do. That's good. Um, I hope so. Yeah. It's the best. I hope so. Right. $100. Right. But so, I want yeah. I want my boy Bernie to win, but he's already out of the election. He's already out of the race, apparently. But we can write him in. I don't know if that. I know, work, like but... seriously. I know, like it just takes like a mat. Like once again, it takes massive, like a massive number of people to make that change. Because I, because I wanted Bernie to win against Trump, like I last Bernie time. Like yes, me too. Because he's actually <sighs> thinking, like he's actually thinking the way people on the ground think. Like he actually thinks, like. like humans who who aren't just all about money and all about corporate interests like he's actually talking hey. about changes that will help everyone not just the few one percent on top establishment yeah and i'm like oh um, now by you know before it was clinton now it's biden and it's just like i'm like can we just get <sighs> more i hear people? about biden i, I cringe <laughs> Sorry. yeah like can we get more <laughs> leaders no i cringe All because right. it's like it's the same old devil like it's the same the same old beast like i would love to see politicians like i can't say her full i don't remember how to say her full name but aoc you know who i'm talking about oh, alexandria alexandria ocasio cortez yeah i'm yeah, waiting for I'm, her to run i'm in love with her i'm in love yes. with her i'm in love, love with bernie her. just because they're saying things and they're doing things yeah. that like if like see i'm so over politics because we ha- all our politicians are the same old beasts circle jerking each other and just loving just caring about each other and each other's money oh. girl but like i would love to see i never even thought of it so just right now but i would love to see some politicians who were all humans like us all like real people on the ground who come from real experiences and not just from money because when you have money like you just turn like your brain is just so clouded by just 
getting that more of it, money. like yeah. just taking other people's, like taking, taking other people's money so that you have more and more. And it's like you just get hey. more disillusion and more out of touch with reality. And I would just love to see mm-hmm. people leading us who are us because then who are, who are like us because there's so many more of us, the 99% no, than there I'm are not. that 1%, but they're all just running everything. I would mean, like to see term limits. Yeah, yeah, term limits. Yeah. Mhm. So just, just in, like, like that, local um... local government and stuff like mm-hmm. that, because like if you're thinking that like the thing that you're gonna pass is gonna affect me when I get out, you're gonna pass better bills. Mm. They mm. never never think like this because they're like, I'll just be in here for life and get this big check. Mm. But yeah. Mm. Uh, it's it's. Mm. Uh, I mean. I think the closest uh, that America has come to in, I guess, in recent years would have to be o- Obama. I mean, I, mm, yeah. you know, one of the things that really got me... The closest him, we got. Was the fact that he was just fucking cool. Like, I mean, his, his mm. exit speech was just like, Obama out, fucking drops and like, walks off. Like, so mm. cool. Um, it, it, it was the <laughs> president that did that. Um, but... Mm-hmm. One of the things that got me is that ah. every every major shooting that happened in America while he was um, in office just physically broke him. Every time mm-hmm. he could speak about it, you could see the hurt mm-hmm. and the anguish on his face. You don't mm-hmm. see that with Trump because he doesn't care. Mm-hmm. And I mean, even, even recently, Obama actually released um, a video talking about everything that's going on and. He's pissed. Like he's he, like he's mm. holding it together very well, but you can see mm-hmm. the crap mm-hmm. starting to appear, and he's like he's even, even like inside sources are apparently telling um, people about the fact that he, he Obama is like this close to full on just blasting Trump. I would pay to see. Mm-hmm. That. I would I would get a flight over to America, get the fucking popcorn. I would sit down and I would pay <laughs> to see that go down. Because it would be amazing, oh but like it's, <laughs> I can't think of any other um, apart from mm. apart from Bernie and apart from Cortez, I can't think of really any other mm. politician in America that comes to mind that would be um, as as visceral as real. Um, mm. of course, I, mm-hmm. I think like a Stacey Abrams. Stacey Abrams oh. would be good. It's another woman. Oh, it's gonna run okay. for Georgia, and actually, she won the she won the popular vote for that, and then they 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 cheated. It's Georgia. Um, it's Republican, and they always cheat. Oh. Um, but yeah, I think she won like the the popular vote for that oh. for her state, the governor. Oh. And yeah, so I was I was sad for her. Like dang, oh. she she had the majority of the votes, and then in certain counties yeah, they did yeah. the same fuck shit that they normally do, Red. which is, yeah. oh, you black people can't vote here. Your your polling station mm-hmm. has been moved, and then they, mm-hmm. we shut it down. So, oh, you don't have the right thing. It needs to be like this. Oh, you need to do blah blah blah, blah the stuff that they do in order to make it so that black people can't vote. You know, we've been citizens, first class citizens since like sixty five. So you know, like finally, yeah, feel like. And like, yeah, I'm gonna say, yeah, it's been like since 65 because we finally got our rights to like oh, right around that time 64, 63, 65, somewhere around there. So, and they're still doing BS to us when we try to vote. That's Annoying. Um, oh, I mean, it, the, fact that, um, the fact that it's not compulsory to vote over there is absolutely insane. Mm. I think it is the one country in the world that needs compulsory voting because mm-hmm. no one I feel like I don't want, I don't, I don't want compulsory voting only because people are stupid as shit it'd be something if like people were informed mm-hmm. so I, I i think for me like i think everyone's license should be like you know up to standard like how they're trying to say like everyone should have this like special um license which you get from voting like your license. local dmv oh no like your like your driver's license like you get it oh. from like your local <laughs> dmv it's for security reasons but like that's the license that you have to use now and then on top of that you should be you should have to take like a test before you get into um and before you get into vote and if you can't pass it then you can't vote because you're a fucking idiot and you shouldn't be <laughs> you shouldn't be deciding policy because you're you're in infor- you're not informed and i feel like there would be a lot of people 
yeah. white and black included, right? That would not mm. pass this because they, they have yeah. forgotten ninth grade civics. Okay. And so, so then you get on your, on your license, like, Hey, like when you, when you fill out your thing to get your license, you should take the thing also. Cause you're spending a long ass time anyway for the DMV mm. official to call your name, to get your damn license. So while you're there, just take your test to see if you're able to vote at this time. Everyone has to do it in order to get a license. And then that way you kill two birds with one stone. That would be right? and then like, yeah. I feel like that should be how that works. Because I don't want it, mm. a dumbass informing policy. And there's a lot mm-hmm. of stupid people that inform policy. And then they start sounding like the Republicans that um, mm. confused as to how they didn't have medical insurance because of pre-existing conditions. Well, you went and repealed Obamacare in your state. Mm. And Obamacare gave you medical coverage for pre-existing conditions. You said you didn't mm. want this anymore, so now you have to get something from your from your employer and your employer doesn't want to cover that anymore. So mm. now you're stuck because you need to get stuff for your pre-existing conditions. And whose fault is that? Because your dumbass could have just continued to vote for like Obamacare. Or if you didn't like Obamacare, you could have added some addendums to make it so right. that it fit with what you actually wanted. Exactly. But you didn't. You just wanted to repeal it because it said Obama. Hey. So. I'm just yeah. I'm done. I, I, I think that there's a lot of unfortunate. Oh, yeah, that's a whole nother mess. Another, that's no, a whole nother that's mess. That's such a mess. Yeah, that's a whole nother like, we just... seriously, America needs to have universal health care because we have it in Australia. It's a right. It's a right yeah. to life. And it's life, so... liberty and pursuit of happiness. So how is mm. my health care not under the mm. certain deniable and inalienable right? The right mm. to life. It's the first one, right? Mm-hmm. So healthcare should fall under that, but whatever. Uh, it's it, all Just, the city is yeah. the pharmaceutical and um, healthcare companies that are benefiting. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Healthcare not being a thing. And right. fucking hell, it is insane. The amount of money that they earn. That, 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 like, it just... We not only do we have universal healthcare in Australia, not only do we have that mm-hmm. for fucking everybody... Yeah, even me. <laughs> we have we have something called the PBS, the farm uh, the pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Um, so lucky, no, Janae. it's so good, it's so good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have something called the pharmaceutical <laughs> uh, scheme, which yeah, what's basically this? Um, substitu- uh, well, basically discounts the price of um, a, a lot of um, the more basic and um, higher end medications that people need, mm-hmm. like, and anything from um, your basic like. Um, high-end cold and flu medication to all the way to like asthma mm-hmm. and um mm-hmm. uh, like uh insulin yeah, for insulin, like yep yep epilepsy mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. people, people get that discounted um mm-hmm. to very affordable mm-hmm. levels because mm-hmm. they're like well you know okay. people need these as a right to live so we're like no mm-hmm. we're gonna make sure that we do this mm-hmm. you know? Um, and even yeah, even they, has the right to that healthcare over here. Mm-hmm. America's like, oh no, we're the. It's a wild. No, you're not. No, you're not. Just. You know, I feel like if they if they were to ever pass universal health care, mm-hmm. I feel like American like wealthy people would be like, well, not for foreigners. You just mm-hmm. have a green card. You can. They would try to find some way Always. to be to make someone pay for something. Mm-hmm. Some way. So I feel like America's just so capitalist. Like oh, everything's yeah. about money, and so they just can't even see straight. Like can't think of a way outside yeah. of the norm of having something to be like outside of money it mm-hmm. makes sense. right yeah. there is so far wait so side so question <laughs> just about australia do y'all's toilets really flush in the other way i don't even know i don't I even don't look don't, I, no i, I thought <laughs> that was the case uh, but yeah. that's one of the things i checked when i was over in england a couple of years ago i fact, someone told me that and i was like yeah I gotta go check, yeah. but not right I, I, now. I'm I, I, to check. I can't remember. I don't think so, uh, but yeah. <laughs> I had to ask. It's always, it's been like a burning question of mine. <laughs> and then, um, I'll the second burning you. question is, are y'all's bugs really that creepy? Like I've seen on like it, video about Australia. It's not that my God. It's anywhere near as bad as what people make it out to be. Australia. I think it's the Outback, apparently. <laughs> like where all yeah. the... <laughs> a, lot of it, a lot of it is, but like it's as um, it's like a nas- it's like a national culture of we like we like to fuck with people. <laughs> we really mm, like okay, to I was just like... mess with people a lot. So you'll, you'll hear like I've I've, I've fuck is this? People, like nah. in Australia. No. Yeah. Oh, I've convinced yeah. oh people yeah. That um, we actually used to ride kangaroos into school in certain parts of the country. Oh no, I haven't done that. Have not done that. It's Stop a thing. It. 
Um, it's not a thing. Nah, it's like when we tell people go cow tipping. Yeah. You're, when you're down in the country, we're like, yeah, sure, go cow, go cow tipping. Go tip the cow. This is, this is from Helena. Can you see it? Tell Jessica. <laughs> she say? Tell <laughs> Jessica to move to Australia. <laughs> oh, wow. That's the thing. Yes. Helena's watching yes. the feed and she's like, I'll tell Jessica I'm watching. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, but it, but I mean, yeah, and, and like the spiders and whatnot over here aren't even that bad either, even though the okay. most venomous one in the world lives in Australia and can actually kind of survive underwater for a very significant period of time. But uh, it's Ooh. it's not it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Um, the biggest, the scariest looking thing that we have bug wise or spider wise is the um, huntsman spider, and they can grow bigger than my hand. But they're completely oh, sure. They are 110. They come awesome. in your house? They, yeah, they can. Uh, they come they in your house? They make webs. They, they just don't really do much. They, they're, they're harmless. What do I do? I, I Wait, Jesse. What do I do? I, I have, like, only your face. Like, I, what did I do? Like, I, I can only see you now. I messed up. <laughs> I messed up. You can't see me? Um, oh, no. I okay, can't see you. the call and then coming back in. Oh, my goodness. I did a, uh, always something with her with a computer. <laughs> oh, oh, it's been a day. It's Ooh, a I don't want to look up this Huntsman spider, but I feel like I have to look it up now ah, just to see what no, it's sorry. like. I mean, it's, it's fine. It's not that bad. And, and the snakes and everything over here are not that bad either. Like, and, no. and, uh, Snake is okay. Can, Can you see, see me? Oh, wait, no, I've, oh, I've hey, done something. Never, never Ooh, see, no! Flip your camera. Yeah, my camera is flipped. Oh my god, I did it again. Okay, guys, I'm not. I want to be tech savvy, but I'm just not right now. Don't know what's happening. Hey, there we go. Go. Oh, she Jenea. Jenea. She out of the <laughs> Did you drop out? Oh my god, guys. Oh. Uh, I don't. I don't mean to be this confused. There we go. Oh, I don't mean to be this confused, guys. I'm usually not this bad. Oh my god. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, hilarious. So because hilarious. because I'm a because I'm a gamer because I'm streaming and whatnot, um, I've been really paying attention to how a lot of the gaming companies and whatnot have been responding to this. Um, a lot of the companies in general. It's been really interesting to see like Ben and Jerry's mm. have been full on like fuck this shit, which has been awesome. Mm. Um, ah. And uh, Lego, Lego, Lego. Oh. They not only brought out their statement, they full pulled every single set that had anything to do with the police straight off their shelves. It is not Sick. in circulation. They are just Sick. gone. Um, mm. Like, PlayStation hey. was going to um, release some information about the new um, PlayStation 5 that's coming out later on this year, and they pulled mm -hmm. the stream and like, no, we're not doing this. Right. It's not happening yeah. right now. Um, there are, there are online games um, like uh, Grand Theft Auto Online and Red Dead Redemption mm. Online. Those those servers were shut Damn. down. They were blacked out. Mm -hmm. they all this. They're like, no, we're That's not awesome. Do this. You need to spend time talking, educating yourself, doing these things. Um, and uh, one of the um, one of the games I play quite frequently, uh, the, the one I've got up in the background at the moment, uh, Destiny Two. Um, their their community managers. Um, uh, came out with various different kinds of statements, but and then and then the company themselves, Bungie, actually pulled out a um, amazing statement for it as well. But they're actually showing photos and videos of them going into the process and just going for it. They're 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 they're, they're involved. Oh. They're talking, oh. they're listening, hmm? doing all of these things. Um, one of the main characters in the game itself is an incredibly yeah, incredibly. Sorry. Um, knowledgeable and um, and powerful black woman, and she is mm. known. She's known as one of the most um, like ferocious um, uh, people, one of the most ferocious fighters in the game. Mm. Um, and it is just purely because of who she is, and, and mm. they're constantly trying to um, like be as inclusive and diverse as possible. Mm. And it's so. so so great to see that happening in mm -hmm. every kind of um, every kind oh. of uh, industry of, of the world at the moment. It's not just um, uh. it's not just in the public consciousness. It's going through every kind of different industry. Everything from oh. um, 
all the different like government sectors and um, cafes and uh, factories and whatnot, it's all the way through to the gaming industry, and it's, uh -huh. it's being so prevalent, and it's it's just brilliant to see. Makes sense though, because the the buying power of like Black America. Oh. Hey. 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 All of our children come and go. Hello, <laughs> oh, little children. How are you? This is Hunter. You guys make me want to have one so I can join the party. I don't have oh, one. Oh, uh, she loves to smell his feet. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. See, black, black lives matter. Oh, thank you. Oh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey. yes, Lisa. Yes, Chippa. Mom, hey, welcome, Baba. Good job. <laughs> but yeah, hey. 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 You do that too? Yeah. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. Oh, what? Belly. Our feet. That's um, that's that's enough Arfie. reason to keep talking. Right. That's enough reason to keep um, doing what we're doing because mm -hmm. the way they can live in a world where the they don't future. have to worry about it, or they can live in a world where they mm -hmm. can make more of a change than we have. And and yeah, fight that we're fighting at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's that's a good point. That even if in our lifetimes we don't see a change, like educating our future generations is only going to help. Just yeah. going to help everyone. Just so that they don't have to grow up abusing people. They don't have to grow up being abused, and that they can see that. We all are human, and that's only going to help us elevate as a yeah. It's just going to help us elevate as a society. Lisa, do you believe in equality? Do you believe that all people are equal? Yes, actually. Yes, actually. Do you be surprised to know? No. <laughs> what would you say, Lisa, about like the kids at your school? Like, do you think that like a lot of them are like better than like? us older folks like you think uh -oh. there's more like equality or or is everyone just like going around being rude and saying like oh you're indian you're black you're this you're that oh you're, you're fat you're stinky like, like, like what mm -hmm. and drama. yeah and like so... yeah that's how it was when i was a kid yeah. bullies drama fights stuff mm. and someone made in high school someone made Every human. Mm. I'm like, why you mm -hmm. so be like this? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know. Mm -hmm. We know that girl. But so I think it's a work in progress because when you were like, oh yeah, oh my goodness. Okay, I'm sorry. No, that's fine. No, I really encourage that. My daughter comes in when I'm streaming all the time. Oh yeah, so cute. Oh yeah, I see those feet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's he? Okay. Nothing. Oh, nothing. Hey, <laughs> this is teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa Dorbs, uh, Dorbs. Just so walks but you know, I think, I think there's people in every age group, like even people like in our parents' age group who want change and there's people who yeah. want to keep the status quo so i just hope that it's more people leaning towards change and equality and that it just keeps on keeps on continuing you know yeah and yeah <laughs> definitely oh my goodness is there any, is there anything <laughs> else um you guys have thought about or anything we haven't covered or anything else that you'd 
want to bring up, talk about maybe something from your own personal experiences or do you guys maybe want to share um, a major or maybe the biggest um, experience of uh, direct or systematic um, racism that you, you have actually had happen to yourself? Um, well, I once again, I feel like I've seen like little things or annoying things and stuff like microaggressions and stuff that I feel like are really hard to pinpoint, like, was that racism? Like, I feel like that's much more been my experience of just like, just being uncomfortable and uneasy because I feel like, you know, like I don't get like a lot of overt racism because if I did, I'd be dead, like, or I'd be in jail right now or something like those are the more like overt things that I feel. I mean, like I've had like, you know, police officers not be friendly to me. Like when it's like me and a group of like other black people, like, and then I've also had them like, I've been stopped by the police and it's been fine. Like, you know, that it's like, oh, don't do that or something like, but I haven't gotten killed over it and stuff. So I think I've been lucky because also like, I not like, I don't know. I think it's because of like what, what Jessica was saying about like, not like making yourself small or not making yourself like, someone that they want to hurt but it's just like you know i just you never know what's gonna happen you never know like if um like you know tomorrow something could happen to me because of the color of my skin or you know something good could come of it and you know change could happen but yeah I, mm -hmm. i've just been lucky you know but then like i have been you know only able to live in like a black neighborhood in america and stuff and i've like out. yeah she's gone she'll be back though but you know it's just yeah. i think i've been lucky really like you know where i mean i've been called the n-word i've you know like in australia actually like surprisingly enough that like the first time i was like someone like yelled the n-word I, I don't like that word it's because of the way people like to use it but um and that actually happened in australia but yeah, I, th I think it's more of a culture of them trying to sound cool or, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. you know, I'm going to say whatever, whatever. I don't know. Um, yeah. yeah, I hate that. Like, oh, it's, it's in a song. I'm more familiar. It's less in the term, uh, in, the, in the ways that a lot of people in America would say it. Um, mm. Or they might say it because they just, they know it's offensive to a lot of people and yeah. they say it, they're trying to say it in an offensive way, but they're not mm. saying it in the same way a lot of people in America do, unfortunately. Mm. Well, well, it actually happened, like, I was just walking with my friend who just left, Lisa. <laughs> I was just walking down the street, hello, with her, hey. and then yeah. someone yelled out of their car, like, the N-word at me, and, they, and so I'm like, ugh. And I, it was, I just took it as a teaching moment for her, like, is that okay, like, for people to say that? Like, just to yell and try to demean and make you feel like you're less than? Like, you know, I just took it as a learning moment, tried not to take it too personally, but, yeah. 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 Mm, that's but tough. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah, the stuff that makes that makes it hard for me to sleep at night and that really hurts me is just how like black people are treated and how we're looked at and like, you know, like in China, how like mm -hmm. they like to take pictures of us and like to, you know, like, Oh, can I touch your hair? Can I pet you? Like basically can I pet you like a dog? Like, you know, like just stuff like yeah. that like irks me, but I feel like what really hurts me is just seeing how we're not even treated as human so many times and like how we're incarcerated mm -hmm. for doing something so small or something that other people do and get away with but then when we do it then all of a sudden it's the worst thing like that is what yeah and it's not even like a bad thing like the, like those two guys that were waiting in starbucks to like wait for their real estate person to come and like take them over to see the house in philly mm -hmm. and i can't tell you how many caucasians i know that it be in starbucks not buying no damn drink whatsoever just chilling like, mm -hmm. for the free Wi-Fi that Starbucks has, and all of a sudden these two black dudes can't can't sit down in Starbucks. But, mm -hmm. uh, it's just, okay, yeah. Like I look so at it and I'm like, I guess it's time to open up a black coffee shop. Bye, because Starbucks coffee is bitter mm -hmm. as fuck. Anyway, you should probably get some Starbucks. You should get some coffee from uh like the Latinos, like Juan Valdez Colombian coffee is pretty good, but Starbucks oh, coffee is okay. shit. Actually, it's not that great. I've bitter never, as fuck. Never tried Starbucks coffee yet. It's, it's really, um, I believe we it is not great. It's just hyped, Australia, but it's not anywhere nearby. Yeah, it, it's it's oh, hyped. Yeah. 
like you can get coffee I mean, I like Starbucks, like, from but... other places. No. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> I just like their iced coffee because it's hella it. sugar, hella milk. <laughs> it's hella sugar. That's what it is. It's disgusting. Yeah, that's what I like. That's exactly what I like about it. <laughs> There's something mm, I can't yeah, I have... I've heard about sweet tea being a thing in mm. I don't mm -hmm. understand that. I mean, I don't like that. It's disgusting. So. Yeah. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> just, just... I mean, I might, I might, I might, I might, like, get kicked out of the United States by saying that, but it's, it's disgusting. It's like somebody took sugar and water and put it in your, in your, in your drink and then just, like, said, drink this. That's, it's what it is. It's gross. Mm. Diabetes in a cup. That's what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Disgusting. Yeah. Do you, uh, one thing, all. one thing that I wanted to say, um, that, a quote that Helena found, actually, is that, when oh jesus when you're used to privilege oh no equality feels like oppression, oppression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that just like i think it's so hard for like people on like people in power or people in pri like with privilege to change or to make us to call this out is because it's like comfortable to just have more and to take from other people but it's possible for all of us to coexist without you having to hurt me just to just to live. Like you don't have to hurt other people just so that you can feel uh, better. I mean, I think it was. I can't remember who said it. Um, I mean, let me see if I can find it. If yeah, I think who was it? Very smart African American guy that was like. Not the best. I don't know. No, it's the other one. <laughs> Right. Nelson Sorry, Mandela. I can't remember. <laughs> Other one. Martin Luther King. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> there's, there's been a few. Jesse, I, I, Jesse Jackson. No, right? I don't yeah. know. The there you go. Obama. It's, it's, yes. it's, it's this one. It's Baldwin. It's Baldwin. Yeah. Yeah. There you uh, go. Alec Baldwin? Um, oh, no, no. James. James. The black guy. James Baldwin. James, yeah, James I don't know. Baldwin. I know you know him. You know him. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. You know him when I say this quote, possibly. <laughs> please, possibly. please do. It's like you know, we can we can disagree and still love each other on like sir, on like issues. It's like unless your disagreement is rooted in my oppression and denial of my humanity mm. and right to exist, and then like we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> like, mm. you know, look up I James Baldwin. He has like actually. great. Yeah, you've heard you've heard of him. You may not yeah, remember. Yeah, once you said it, I'm like, him. oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I I think okay. I remember his face, but I just called him Alec. But I've got to, I'll, I'll do a quick Google. <laughs> oh, gosh. But, okay. yeah, that's so true. It's, like, easy to agree or, like, to agree to disagree unless you don't, like, you don't want, yeah, he just said it way better. Right. Unless you just don't want us yep. to have rights, in which case, like, then, yeah. Have rights and live and, and, and mm -hmm. you know, have the right to disagree be and, and exist and be free mm -hmm. if, if you're gonna sit up there and take away my right to be mm -hmm. just because you disagree with me um we're, we're gonna have a problem you i can disagree mm -hmm. with you all day long i should be able to make it home at the end of the damn day okay mm -hmm. i can remember being stopped by a police officer and and trying to like argue my my case with him and and the police mm -hmm. officer was like are you arguing with me and i was like yeah <laughs> i was like mm -hmm. what the fuck i was like I, I have a first amendment right and you do have to explain yourself to me as we pulling as mm. you're pulling me over for that. And I mind you I was in the wrong. I don't give a shit, but um you still have to explain like yeah what you're doing. Yes. I'm a I'm a citizen of these United States. Like what the fuck? Exactly. You don't just get to tell me what to do. I'm like you're not my dad. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like you have to explain yourself. Mm -hmm. Hey, okay, so explain. Like I'm not taking no shit from nobody if I can really help it. Mm. Um I just remember he was like, "Are you talking back to me?" I was like, "Who the fuck you think you talk to? Don't you think my mm. dad?" Like, mm. I just remember being sounds, like, "Yeah, ever like explain why you're pulling me over, or mm -hmm. I'm just gonna leave from this freaking from this ticket, and or you know like whatever. I'll just contest it later on. But you don't get to tell me like, are you talking back to me? As if I can't speak mm. the right to my freedom of speech, like, I, mm -hmm. ooh." And he pulled over yeah. a lot of people that day when I went to court, and I I still mm. contested. I I had to pay, but not as much. But still, mm. I was like. Cop was an ass, and that's the thing mm. that I think that that's the majority of like cops are like that. Mm -hmm. They just tend to treat you like 
you're not like like you're like not a citizen in the United oh. States. I got put over one time like up in Pennsylvania. They ask you all these questions not pertaining to the traffic stop. So I'm I, and that's what oh. I use. I'm like I'm sorry. Sir, you can confer with your other partner. He has all my information. Just go talk to him. I was like, uh-huh. don't tap on my window and break my window. Don't ask me whose car this is. Don't ask me whose shit is in here. Don't, uh-huh. is, is this related to the f- reason that you pulled me over? No? Uh-huh. Okay, I'm rolling my window up and I'm not answering you. Don't bother uh-huh. me. I, sometimes I have a bit of an attitude to cops because I'm just, I'm not trying to deal with your their fuck shit. They're, it's just like uh-huh. fuck shit most of the time. I'm like, and I know because we'll I've been in cars with other people, mm. and, and they're and they've been Caucasians that they never have to deal with this shit, mm. ever. So it's like, well, really? I'm not gonna deal with it as as I'm like a citizen too. So like, I'm not dealing with that either. I know that I have that glitch because I think I get away with it because I'm a girl, right? So like, oh. I'm not gonna say that that is the reason why. Not gonna say that that's what mm-hmm. everyone else should do. Because right. I know, like, like if they were my brothers, hell no. They're like, mm-hmm. so all of you need to present your IDs, and all of you need to need to tell me mm-hmm. what you're doing in this car. And and because they're mm-hmm. black and in DC, and that's the law in DC, they all give their IDs out. But mm-hmm. normally, when you're in it, when you're in a car and uh, the cop pulls you over, if you're a passenger, you don't have to present anything. Right. Ever. In DC, they always bother the black people and be like, you know, you have to present your ID. You have to answer all our questions, even if you're a passenger. Hmm. Hmm. It's like, and and I know if you're white, like you don't have to do that. Ever. Damn. Forever. So that sort of stuff is just like things that we want to change. Like you know, mm-hmm. I think we'll, we'll know we've arrived in America. This is a funny thing. I think Chris Rock mm. said it. Like we'll know we'll, we'll we'll have arrived in America when, when all the ethnicities can can mess up and to the degree that Caucasians have messed up in the United States and and at home at the end of the day with like hardly any things attached to like their like record <laughs> like that's mm. when we'll know we've arrived in the United States mm. like okay wow like we yeah but until mm. then no we haven't arrived mm. <laughs> because you know this guy could could rob a grocery store or a convenience store and a white guy could rob a grocery store or a convenience store they mm-hmm. get the same amount of points you get like points for like when you're doing bad stuff in like the court system we'll and then like the years that you get as a caucasian will be significantly lower it could be mm-hmm. the same damn crime you could be the mm-hmm. same damn age you do the same thing and get the same mm-hmm. amount of points Caucasian dude will go to jail for like two years the person will be in there for like 10 15. it's mm-hmm. like but it's the same damn thing mm-hmm both guys they're both the same age they both robbed the convenience store they both took the same amount of money from the convenience store two different convenience stores had the same amount of money they took the same amount or within like dollar amounts of it right one will go to jail for two years and the other one go to jail for 10 to 15 what the fuck's going on Mm, and it's because they feel like we're inherently evil or we're inherently wrong when i feel like it's just them feeling shitty about what they did and now they want to turn it on us like project it on us like they're shitty that they enslaved us and now they're like they don't want to own us to them. It. so there's like I, well, no, if you we ever let them you. get back yeah. if we ever let them get to a position of power would they possibly do the same fuck shit mm. that we've done to them to us so we can mm. never let them gain power that's that's <laughs> yeah yeah that's so me, true the, the like every single person of color in america would have more than enough right to do some mm. fucking mm-hmm. fucked up shit to um, the majority mm-hmm. of the um the government and, and um mm-hmm. i'd say that i'd say like the government i don't because like, i don't want to do anything to like regular random ass caucasians right. I, don't, I don't care yeah. that always bothers me because they always are saying stuff like they're like we know that black people always start problems they're gonna come out here to like you know our area and bother us i was mm-hmm. like number one girls don't even know where you live but two even if they did know ain't nobody trying to go to like bumfuck wisconsin to go mm-hmm. find your asses to go bother you right mm-hmm. you live like really freaking far away and it's cold as hell mm-hmm. and then, and then they, i remember watching like some like dateline episode where it's like 
I know these black people came and they drove four hours for marijuana. I was like, lies. You don't even smoke. No, no one's driving four hours no. away for some marijuana it's or right any, street, recreational, <laughs> any recreational activity. No one's going four miles for any of that. You sound like you don't like have fun no. often. Yeah. Oh my goodness. No oh, yeah. one's doing that. Like that's not like, how that goes down. Stop it. Like <laughs> it just yeah. Thank you. It just doesn't. Even if you're doing regular fun, it doesn't go down like that. Mm. So that don't. I better be like putting in like a, like a lotto for like some money. I drive four hours for that. Like Gosh, knowing that I might could possibly win some cash, but. Yeah. Four hours yeah. no. to just for recreational activities. Yeah. No, I go to the park Unless, four like, hours Disney. away. Yeah. Yeah. True. That's the only. Disney. I might do That's that. Right. Exactly. That might be the only reason. Maybe. Mm. Disney, I've heard their rides aren't that great. The lines are too long. I don't know. And too high. I don't know. But I have a it's too high. I have a quote. Ever. If you all One. and it's written down this time, so yeah. <laughs> God, I've been Googling uh, as we're on this live chat. <laughs> that's good. See, I'm just over here ma- remembering the quote. <laughs> Do you have no Okay, Helena gave me this one too. This is a good one. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Yeah, okay. And so I think that's, you know, that's where we come in, you know? Like, we can think of what we can do and then do it. And, you know, instead of thinking, oh, our contribution is not going to make any difference, just think, if we do something, maybe it'll encourage our friends to do something and encourage the next person to do something that is positive because evil people, like, I don't think anyone's inherently evil, but evil people, they go around doing evil shit, taking stuff, killing people, doing all of this, all these things that hurt each other. So we have to balance the scales, you know, any way we can. So, yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely right. That's absolutely what we need to can't just sit there and be silent and go, oh, you know, someone's mm. going to deal with the issue. Someone mm. is going to um, take control and, and handle this for us. No, we have mm. to all be doing it ourselves. Yeah. We mm. all have to be mm. taking a stand and doing what mm. we can. Um, yeah. It's interesting you brought up um, about the, about the, like, the um, getting stopped by the police and whatnot. Mm. I think... In the, in the same way that um, there tends to be this culture surrounding um, the Second Amendment and guns and that freedom to be mm-hmm. able to own a thing that can mow down 15 people in a couple of seconds. See, I just want like a regular one. Not, not the, not the air. <laughs> like a self-defense right. one. The self-defense, the self-defense one. one. Yeah. I want it to be rose gold. Mine is going to cost about $1,000 because I'm of just, course. I'm just a girl. Like, oh my god. In, in, engraved in gold, your name on it, you know, maybe. Oh my god, you know me so well. Yeah. You don't even know. Pearl. Eye, you know, like, Pearl and oh Blade Handle, Mother of Pearl and oh Blade Handle, you know, Ooh. Rose Gold. <laughs> the shiny. At, at yeah. that point, you might as well just go fuck it, frame it, and chuck it up on your wall. <laughs> right. Hey, would you want to get that out? It wouldn't. I would just put it up like, this is my gun. Do you okay. see that's really pretty? Oh, the bullets, the bullets would have to be like diamond tipped and then just like... Right. Bullets would be specifically mine. They yeah. would be specifically mine, engraved with my name so you'd know it'd be me. Like... Terrible. Like, if you get, you if mess with the wrong like a, one. Say like one with like a, like a revolver with like six rounds in it and it's got like just your name spelled out and like it's like J-E and then like the next bullet's like S-S and then it just like kind of just spells out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Mm. I love it. <laughs> love it. Uh, yes. but, but yeah, like it's that it's that <laughs> yeah. culture of of guns. And, well, like, we we don't have that over here in Australia. We don't have that. Oh, guns are a thing. Guns are great and guns are wonderful and everything. Mm. We, we, you can't go down the street into a fucking Just Walmart buy and one. buy some, like oh. that. What do I think about like that? Like thirteen years old. Thirteen years old too. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah, kids buying guns. guns for- milk. Per- no permit. Apartment. Yeah, especially down south. Oh. Especially down south. Oh, that blows me I out. I say, but especially down south. Yeah, that that doesn't surprise me, considering everything that I've ever heard about the South America, South of America, like mm. that, that, that general culture of like that's it's the same when it comes to uh, the police force. It's they, mm-hmm. they gri- it, the best people could go into the position, and to be fair, I have seen though not enough. 
um, policeman speaking up and just straight out fucking resigning um, mm. from the force forever because of all this. But mm. th they breed this culture of, mm -hmm. um, of, of brutality, of violence, of mm -hmm. racism and sexism and elitism. That they, they believe that they mm -hmm. are better. They are the, you know, the, the paragons of justice and order in the world and that um that you know when when they go stop someone they have all the power it's like no you need to do this because i'm a police officer that's what i do mm -hmm. and i need to do what i say um and it, and it attracts people like that to to these positions because that's what they can do they can exercise this power over other people that they know full well they don't have they know they don't have the power, especially in their own lives so they get the key mm -hmm. um fucking doing that and that's part of the issue you want if we want these kind of things to stop we need to change the culture um mm -hmm. great in positions like those of being a police officer mm -hmm. uh because it, it, it makes perfect sense that that's exactly what needs to be happen happening i feel like it's like you know, these cops are like well there's no way i can i can be you know like held accountable for this job you know my job's dangerous my job's this my job's that it's like uh, number one nobody forced you to uh, sign your name on on the application to be a police officer you decided that's what you wanted to do uh -huh. so number one it, it's a job where you're held to a higher standard because you have to uh, set that example for the citizens right, right? Nobody wants a doctor that's like, you know, well, it's a hard job and well, you know, whatever. I'm just going to be out there. Just, you know, if I, if I save a life, then I save a life. But if not, you know, my, my C, my C will get me a degree. No, motherfucker, I want like an A plus 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 doctor and I want an A plus 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 police officer as well. Uh -huh. And like, I'm going to need you to be like uh, someone who sets that good example because we've basically written, uh, we've been, not written, but we've basically kind of like, um, acknowledge this like unwritten social contract each other in this in the society and it's like yeah. you know you you have to be like upholding the law because we're looking yeah. up to you as, as police officers even though you, you your job is tough right but we're looking up to you as police officers and if you're not going to uphold the laws then why should we yeah true exactly and if we cannot and, exactly and you have to set the example so and that's your that's your job and if you don't like it like don't sign up to be a police officer right so mm -hmm. i think like some things that could change would be like it's entirely too easy to become a police officer it takes like mm -hmm. maybe, like three months to six months to become a police officer mm -hmm. i'm like in the same way that teachers it takes years to become a teacher mm -hmm. it needs to take years to become a police officer and then um the money that you get to be a police officer needs to be uh like commensurate to like the acts that you you do or the or the lives that you don't take right like right so like start off like at like maybe fifty thousand each time that you de-escalate right your bonuses get a bit higher or like if you have to shoot someone then okay because you know possibly you feared for your life or whatever but like not fear for your life because they use that as an example, but you should be using de-escalation tactics right, right. or so than not. And the more that you use because you want to be a peace officer, not a police officer, yes. more like higher your bonus could be. And then if, if you are out here like consistently like taking lives like that, then the money that come that need to be paid to these families comes from you. It doesn't need to come mm -hmm. from taxpayer dollars. Mm -hmm. And these are just, like some ways I feel like they should be re like you know structuring the police department. Mm. Really should. They should like mm -hmm. defund it because I know I know Cali is looking into defunding or not Cali L A is looking to defund mm. their police department. When I researched it, they're getting they're giving that to police department like two billion dollars, and they're only Jesus. giving the city of of L A like one hundred and fifty million. What the fuck is that one hundred fifty no. million gonna do? That's not that's not equal. Mm -hmm. There's nothing equal about that. Oh, Google that. Yeah, I think we should we should really look at that because that it was like 150. I'm about to put it up right now. 150 million to the city of LA to like defund the police department. I was like, what is mm. that? It's mm. nothing. Yeah. Let's find it. It's it's exactly. Yeah, that's it. 150 million cuts. Yeah, 100 to 150 million. Like two days ago. Hmm. Two days ago, and they're gonna—they're just gonna cut the 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 fund of the police for 150 million. But mind you, they get like two billion. Jesus Christ! Like, and our military, like the American military, is 
too OP. Like it's too overpowered. Just too much control over the rest of the world. Like, like, and we like America funds like using our tax dollars. They're funding the military, funding the police, who and their uh, their organizations. Real. Yeah. They not, to, not to throw Israel under the bus, but we give mm. them so much mm. money. And all these mm. conservative pundits on, on, like, I like to watch, like, Meet the Press and stuff like that. And mm. I like to hear conservatives, like, bitch and moan about how, how are we going to pay for things that, that AOC talks about? How are we going to pay for mm. things that Bernie talks about? You could exactly. literally defund part of the military and we would still have enough money to keep America running. It is ridiculous mm. we spend we spend more money than the 26 developed nations in the world combined we mm. still and and we give money to israel on top of that mm. so like i i'm just like there's more than enough we can mm. we can stop giving our monies out to this because i i think we're gonna be okay guys i feel like mm. <laughs> i feel like we're gonna be fine take that money and reallocate it to like education allocate it to like you know the cities healthcare. that need better infrastructure oh. mm -hmm. fund universal health care exactly all kinds of stuff I, 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 energy. Yeah, exactly. mixed up. I was blown oh, away by so this. many oh things. yes i mean yes. i was told something about the american education system i did not know about the fact mm. that um, my full faith and trust we are, i'm not sure if you know this um, you Jenea, but in, in australia we mm. have something um called the higher education loan program that basically means that for those who can't outright just pay for their university courses, which is most people, because most people aren't going to have like 80 grand to just go, oh, here you mm -hmm. go. Um, mm -hmm. We have the higher, higher Education Loan Program, which basically means um, the um, the government will take on the, um, the amount of money required for the loan, and then mm. you will pay that back over a series of mm -hmm. like either voluntary repayments whenever you want, or... Because I, I actually work for the tax office now, so I actually know. Mm -hmm. um, so I, uh, I got a little bit about it, but um, voluntary repayments, or it comes out in your tax return. So what, what they'll do mm -hmm. is um, we have something called pay as you go withholding, where um, mm -hmm. every, every pay period, so every time you get paid from your employer, your employer withholds a certain amount um, of your pay um, for tax, so they and then send it off to the tax office. Um, and then at the end of the financial year, you lodge your tax return. The, um, the ACO then works out, okay, this is how much tax we you... We have to get um, inside that period. Uh, this is how much tax no applies to the amount of income you've us. earned. And then the money that's been withheld throughout the year gets used to pay that. Um, mm. One of the, one of the uh, taxable um, one of the um, taxable parts of your return will be a higher education loan repayment. So they'll go, okay, you've earned this much over the year out of this particular set of brackets we've done for this financial year. Um, okay, here's the amount you would have to earn a we'll percentage of your income. Um, and then they take that and add that onto your tax return and that's basically part of the tax you pay. And that is how you pay it off year by year by year. The fact that America doesn't have anything like that terrifies me. <laughs> like one of, my, one, of my friends, one of my friends, her partner has to, literally is applying for the military so he can mm. go to and and stay there for like five fucking years or some bullshit so he can just mm. go to college and not have to be drowning in debt for the rest of his life mm -hmm. that's insane that's fucking nuts land of the free mm -hmm. my ass what mm -hmm. like no All way the time. no yep. universal health care and no universal education system no matter what danger nope Fuck. and they're constantly cutting they're constantly cutting education funds and like cutting arts programs, cutting things that make us like more enlightened, more educated, more free, more able to make choices for ourselves. They're just cutting that shit. And then yeah. it's a crazy, it's a crazy world. And then they yeah. like, you know, the rich have enough money to go to the private schools, go to great schools and get great educations. And then we're left just sitting there to yeah. be workers like well you know your your parents are workers you need to be a worker too like get out in the field get get to work you know that's uh -huh. that's what we're here for but yeah it's crazy i keep making references to because we have a baby in the house i keep making references to his college fund like oh well, this will go towards his college fund and then i remember oh you get it paid for by the government never mind whereas in america you know 
You need to have been saving up your entire life. Oh, lucky baby. Yeah, <laughs> that's why. That's, that's why. That's why yeah. I'm. I'm Going Hello. into IT so I can make I can make more money mm -hmm. just on the off chance mm -hmm. I have babies in the future. Like mm -hmm. we need to have it. So <laughs> But like that's 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 the thing. Like um the education system is a little bit different over here as well. We have we have like colleges, but the colleges themselves, mm. um, depending on the state, it is mainly over in Tasmania where we, we have um, we have kindergarten and then we have um, prep or prep story. Then we have grades one through to twelve. Um, and grades uh, from Even kinder so through to grade six me. is um, primary school. And then from <laughs> grade seven through to grade here, ten in Tasmania it's you. high school. And then grades mm -hmm. eleven and twelve are college. It's this kind of okay. like intermediary um, set of two years between the end of high school and um, and, and, and uni where you can actually you get basically prepped for it you know if that's, mm, that's good that's cool that's it's not, cool it's yeah. not a requirement to go all the way to year 12 for most mm. you know, for most um job opportunities and whatnot but it certainly mm. does help and mm -hmm. uh, in most other states high school we'll goes from grade this. 7 to grade 12 you know that's where that is um there are certain specialized things like um the National Institute of Dramatic Arts, where um, or the Western Australian Academy of the um, Dramatic Arts, where you can go for specialised um, training in um, courses mm -hmm. in, like the Dramatic Arts. Um, mm -hmm. And that obviously you do need to pay for yourself. In, in way that there would be like payment plans the and other will stuff survive you can work out. There's um, the last like obviously there's apprenticeships, like trade schools this. and things like that. Um, there's things uh, called well, uh, what what we've got down here are TAFEs, and that's um, mm -hmm. in, in Tasmania anyway. Um, TAFEs are mostly just um, schools where you can go and, and either by distance online or actually in the school itself, you can get certificates um, and like qualifications in things. You have like my most full of the, faith um, and trust, like guardian. Blue trades and whatnot, um, you and or Harris even both. leading into um, like university courses like. Uh, uh, business management or uh, psychology and various different things like that, which you can pay for, and they are not as expensive as you'd think. Um, mm. You can pay those off, or you could maybe get it subsidised through uh, the unemployment services we have here. If you oh. are the unemployment services, dependent on the your own circumstances, you may even get part, if not all, of the courses <laughs> subsidised. So you wouldn't even need to pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sick. Any of it, you know, and there is always I, I can't, I just cannot imagine what it would be like in America. I never, and and and, and I, I mm. hope, I hope you know, guys don't take this bit in, in, a, in the wrong way, but I never want to live there. I mm. never, yep. ever, yeah. ever, ever, yep. ever want to live. You shouldn't. There. And I don't you shouldn't. Why you shouldn't lives. go. And I have, <laughs> yeah. I have all the privilege in the world, and I don't want to fucking live. Mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a bit obnoxious. I think like the, the the thing that I just I just looked at on on Facebook not that long ago in in regards to like to bring it bring it back to like the protests and the looting and stuff like that, which was just really really interesting. Like when when someone had talked about like why were people looting and stuff like that. And I don't understand like the anger that Black Americans have, and I was like, it's just a history lesson, y'all. Like it it was like it was it was like a like an educational moment for me because I was like, mm -hmm. how do you not how do you not know this? Mm -hmm. It'd be like, it's like mm -hmm. so then this one lady was like, I'm going to break it down for you. And so I was just wanted to put it out here just to share. <laughs> and so mm. the lady was like, it'd yeah. be like if you played Monopoly the, with the majority class for like 400 years, except mm -hmm. you're not allowed to actually play Monopoly with them for the first 400 rounds of Monopoly, mm. okay? Right. <laughs> and then when you finally yes. were allowed to play, so every time you yes. were playing, you had to like give the Monopoly money that you made. Yes. To the other person, right? For 400 <laughs> freaking years. And then within those 400 years, you had about 50 years, right? Where we're allowed to finally play on the on the board. And mm. then um, instead, like, they, they you, you amassed some monies for 50 years, right? <laughs> then after that, uh, they take your money and they burn it. And they, they decide to, like... It and and take it from you and everything. She was like, <laughs> "He's so cute." She was like, <laughs> yeah. and she was like, and that's what 
Woo! So Oklahoma was when they burned our cities. Yeah. That's what Rosewood mm -hmm. was when they burned when they burned that down. And sit mm -hmm. <laughs> there and say, "Why are black people angry now?" Mm -hmm. uh, you're 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 being a bit disingenuous now. Mm -hmm. and like you're you're yeah, cause like and then after after Tulsa and Rosewood, that's like the like the turn of like the, the 20th century. So now you mm -hmm. have. Um, okay, yeah, sure, we'll allow you to play Monopoly, but we're going to commit psychological warfare against mm -hmm. you and say, oh, you're only here as a as an equal opportunity hire. You're only here as somebody who's gotten it by affirmative action. You're only here because you're not actually really that smart. You, we, only, we have to give you, mm -hmm. we have to help you out so much, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, like, the, with, with the protests that are happening, it's like, if people want to burn and loot shit, I'm like, burn this shit down. I'm, this mm -hmm. shit's in the, in the hood, and it's it's sitting there mocking me at the fact that I could have mm -hmm. opened up a store like that myself had you just mm -hmm. left me and my people alone for, like, a good year. Like, we could have had that. Had mm -hmm. it, actually. But every single time we didn't play Monopoly, like, how the, how the powers that be wanted us to, mm -hmm. let's go burn their shit down. Oh, I mean, Is it any wonder yeah. we burned down a target? I don't give a shit. Let the target burn. Oh, the, the mm -hmm. CEO of Target came out and said, I don't give a fuck. CEO said, I don't give a fuck. I don't, 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 right. don't care. I will continue the end of the day. for the community. Like, and because because this whole time, I think COVID-19 made it so that a lot of them are losing merchandise anyway. So mm -hmm. how are they going to sell it? People weren't able to come out and buy anything. So. Yeah. yeah. It, it, I, I love, feel like they can I claim loss of images movie. because of COVID and then yeah. ever. Oh. Yeah, people are getting pissed, and, oh. the, and then he's like, I am paying all of my employees continually mm. all the time. I'm paying them all so they can mm. keep surviving, regardless of the fact the store's there. We're going to rebuild mm. the store. I'm going to use we'll all of my resources pay. to provide for the people in these communities that are suffering right now, and you mm -hmm. guys will get fucked. I don't care what you say about That's the Target beautiful. Yeah. Down. Yeah. And, and like That's when beautiful. the CEO of a worldwide company, because we've got targets over here. Mm. So mm -hmm. like, the CEO of the hey. company turns out and goes, actually, I don't care, and if I don't, you shouldn't. Hey. Yeah. You know. So I feel yeah. like it, it has to die. It, 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 it has to mm -hmm. in the United States. Like I feel like the liberal movement is like 70% to 30%, and with this next census, it's like a 73% like Caucasian, but now it's 60%. Hmm. I'm just seeing it slowly but surely, like continuously, like going down in the in the forms of like just this idea of superiority based on like you know the fact that you have white skin. Like I feel like it's gonna go away. It will probably be like in our 70s when we finally see the manifestation of what that looks like. We'll be able to see just a little bit, and then we'll be like, okay, let's go on and go to heaven now or whatever. Yeah, and, you know. I, feel like we're gonna see it That's beautiful. our lifetime i really mm. it's my hope mm. I mean, like I, mm -hmm. anyone you're they want to see my that heart when you say that like that, that you know i don't care if i'm 90 well i'm i don't know if i'm gonna be 90 but you know like i don't know if i want to be 90 no i wouldn't mind being i wouldn't mind living to like 100 but then i'd, I'd worry that people would be like is jess gonna make it up here she's been down there for a long time like is she gonna uh, make well, it up like, I, I, i'd be kind of concerned like did she did she go to the other one <laughs> I feel like that's what people will probably say if I was the moon. Yeah. It's been down there for a minute. Yeah. Eight months. Believe. <laughs> Your salvation. That's beautiful. Well, is there anything else you guys wanted Just to uh, cover or lie. bring up today? Or anything else that's been on your minds? No, I think I, I, no, I just covered a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> this I'm is much better than... You guys on. I'm glad I was out Yeah. There provide a platform for you guys to speak up and mm. speak out, you know, we've all got to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm honored that you guys would want oh, to come on and, and feel, um, mm. able to share your experiences and your um, thoughts and feelings. Mm -hmm. on this. The foul mm -hmm. emanating from that. Well, thanks for having the platform ah. and, uh, yeah, ah. I'll share the video too. <laughs> so, so more people can see it and just continue, uh, finding ways to help, you know, so that this, like this current momentum doesn't just die down until the next police shooting. Like, so we can keep the momentum going. Hey, yeah. What's secret, man? Mm. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. The power to the people, and I mean like we all people, okay? Because yeah. this this BS has to die, mm -hmm. and you know, by, by any means necessary. Hopefully, not violent ones, but mm -hmm. if it's necessary, exactly. Hopefully not, but if it's necessary, like I'm not gonna sit down and just take the beat down, okay? So mm -hmm. hopefully, by any means necessary, with with peace, peaceful pro. Yeah, if it needs to happen, mm -hmm. then okay. But you know what? We can all raise our fists. <laughs> In solidarity to end, like, you people. know, <laughs> like you know, mm. just the BS that happens around the world mm -hmm. towards people of color mm -hmm. and all the other isms that are out there. So, power to mm -hmm. the people. And I'm out here in in, in USA, mm -hmm. and y'all are out there in Australia. Power to the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's like the like the Hunger Games <laughs> little sign, right? But yeah, it's the fist in, in the real world, good. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, that, and that's exactly. I mean, that's exactly what it was. That is a great example of. Um, of a series of people that have just been impressed by the upper class and just rise up mm. and go, I'm not going to participate in your coming? murder games anymore. Mm -hmm. They do something about it, and that's exactly mm -hmm. what's happening now, you know? No. I've seen, mm -hmm. I've seen, I think one of the best um, videos I've seen of a um, peaceful protester, or just, or just any of the protests and riots, it's a, um, this awesome, this awesome dude, it's awesome um, black dude, what he's doing is he's kneeling down in front of this massive, a uh, massive lot of um, fully armed police officers. And it, there's a bunch of other people there, but he's going like, I, I, I'm with you guys. I stand for you guys. I I love you guys. We're not we'll here to do anything. Sick. We, we, we uh, want this kind of stuff to end. And he's uh, bleeding and he's, like, he's just pouring his heart out. And then this other cop just comes up out of nowhere and pulls him up and just throws him into the rest of the, uh, um, the rest of the, um, crowd of police officers he separates mm. because this guy is actually the one person speaking out and the rest, mm. of, the, the, rest of the crowd gets oh, very fucking angry they start shouting and yelling uh. He's like, mm. he wasn't doing anything mm. like, like that's that's the level that we're at where it's just tell me what you and Eris have learned not only are they trying to silence people but it's just that these kind of protesters are starting to come up where they're like this we, is but a we understand we, we still love you guys we still are here for mm. us we're hurting right now. We, uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're uh, scared. We're worried. We, we, we just we want to be heard. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mm -hmm. That's where we're at. Any um any final thoughts or um messages or anything else you want to chuck out there? No, I'm, I'm good. good. Just let me know when you when you make this into like your your uh whatever thing that I can download. I don't know really how to oh, download yeah. it, but. <laughs> Definitely want it. Too. I can show uh, it on my on my you know Facebook will. page. Um, yeah, exactly. Same. Thank you. Two and a half hours. No, so um, I'll be yeah. take your time. Take your time. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. My good uh, side. I'll have to. I'll have this to one. like uh, <laughs> properly compress it and put it into a video. Um, and I'll, um, chuck that up um, on YouTube uh, sometime in the nice. next couple of days. Um, I likely nice. have an extra day off before I go back to work on Tuesday, so I'll mm. put into it. But um, tell me yeah, what you and Eris have learned. Excellent. Ed. We appreciate it. Same. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. Can you say bye? Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. Been waving this whole time. See, see you. you. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 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 That's cute. Oh, that's so cute. cute. <laughs> Bye. 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 Oh, cute. I'm gonna go eat now. <laughs> Bye. I'm gonna go wash my face. <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful and amazing to have you guys. No on. matter what so day. Mm. Really like meeting so you. Again. Thank you for having us. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Mm. Thanks for everyone who stopped by. Um, you guys mm -hmm. are great. Um, if you do have any more questions or anything like that, um, do let me know. Um, in the chat, mm. even um, in the comments of the YouTube video, I'm going to bring this up. Um, mm. This is Naya and Jessica for stopping by. Mm. And um, mm. stay safe out there, guys. Keep speaking up, keep speaking out. Yes. Have a job to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, nice, y'all. Nice finish, nice finish. <laughs> Bye. Bye.